the most part, we're going to talk about two different chapters. Um, the last time we went through this, we actually read through those whole chapters. But they lengthy chapters. The Jeremiah 50 and Jeremiah 51. Okay? So most of this teaching is going to be um, centered in those two chapters. Okay? But uh, um, going back, just, you know, a little bit about, you know, me and Mo talking and how we read um, it was more so when the Lord brought me across this, uh, it was a point where <laughs> it wasn't like it was completely brand new to me because I know about um, the Lost Tribe guys, you know, at the, at the flea markets with the dreads and then, you know, they walk around. And I'm like, <laughs> you know, but I want to kind of research it first. I'm a research guy, you know what I'm saying? I come from a background um, in church where we were. <laughs> Taught certain things and other things that's that seek out. So, so I want to prove this before I just, you know, go any further. So that's basically what I did. So I spent my time just digging this out. And then when I came to other brothers, they had the same mindset because um, some brothers, they take this and they go all the way left with it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But I mean, I understand where they're coming from at the same time. To I me, mean, we grew up in church. And um, when you come to this realization about yourself and then your first thought is, how come nobody told me this? You, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So I don't I don't condemn them for being in the place where they're at because I, I fully understand that. I mean, when I started reading this order from Bible Dictionary and it says not the Negroes, <laughs> my mind was like, what? Is, this is the Bible Dictionary. People go to seminary and they learn this stuff. Ain't nobody telling us this. You, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah, exactly. So I needed brothers. I was looking for brothers that had that mindset of um, because a lot of times we come into a new truth. Um, we have the tendency to abandon everything. There's certain things we not necessarily need to abandon. Certain certain things are foundational. Yeah, but, yeah. Right. Amen. Yeah, yeah. The gospel truth. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, um, so I'm looking for people that had that mindset of like, hey, look, the rock solid things hold on to them. The things that they need to be prepared. Say it again. I said you better hold on. To right, right, right. <laughs> um, so, but anyway, so getting back into this, um, if somebody, uh, if they already got Jeremiah 50. We read the first couple of verses. Um, if you read all both chapters, we'll be here for a minute. So I'm not going to ask y'all to read those chapters. But anybody that's got Jeremiah 50 starting at one, um, read that for me if you can. The word that the Lord spake against Babylon and against the land of the Chaldeans, Chaldeans. by Jeremiah the prophet, declare ye among the nations and publish and set up a standard Publish and conceal not. Say Babylon is taken. Baal is confounded. Merodach is broken in pieces. Okay, you want that for me? So, all right, two things you got to understand about scripture. And the more you study this, you're going to find this out, okay? God is a God that doubles and triples, okay? So a lot of times people, they'll read these scriptures and they'll try to apply it to one time period when God would continually do that same pattern over and over and over again. Yeah. You understand know what I'm saying? Like tomorrow when we get into the covenant, you want to see the covenant, everything is about patterns, right? Yeah. Um, for instance, get um, Passover, we know that that's, you know, off the muscle, you know, the Passover, you know, the, you know, the lamb that was sacrificed for our sins. Jesus Christ comes, he's the, the lamb that sacrificed for our sins, right? You see the, um, the fulfillment of uh, a two. You read in the scripture about the witness of two or three. You understand? Okay. So what you're gonna see is events in history happen the exact same way. The events in history in the Bible are by the witness of two or three, right? So you got the original Babylon, which was um, uh, with Nimrod, right? You have the the new Babylon, um, Nebuchadnezzar's time, and then you have another Babylon that comes around during the end of time. That's a threefold witness. Mm. Okay. You follow me? Yeah. That's so true. like we went to Revelation, we see in Revelation it says. Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of all harlots, right? And that's in the future time. Mm -hmm. So it's mentioning Babylon in the future time, oh. right? But see, the problem is, <laughs> sorry. the problem is, and we'll get to, we're going to dig this tomorrow, so I'm not going to hit this too hard. We've been looking at it from a European perspective. So yeah. when you look at the Bible from a European perspective, you think Old Testament, New Testament. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You see that, that what that white page that separate them two um two areas of the book. <laughs> oh, man, that's, that's that part. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. But what we do, if we go back and study the scriptures, what we find out is a lot of that stuff that's in that side of the book haven't been fulfilled yet. And a lot of times God will use the old time testaments to talk about the stuff that's happening in the future. That's right. Why do you think John used the word Babylon? Think about this now. When apostles wrote the scripture, they wouldn't write the scripture from New Testament. 
That's right. That's right. That's right. right. Okay? It was writing scripture from Old Testament. From Old Testament. Right? So when they say going through the scriptures is what they're talking about. They're talking about the law and the prophets. All right. So a lot of times he harkens back to the to the, um to the prophets. Mm -hmm. So going back to Jeremiah. So once we read through Jeremiah, what you're gonna find out is Jeremiah prophesies the actual fall of Babylon and Nebuchadnezzar. And at the exact same time he's prophesizing about the fall of America, mm. which wow. is the current Babylon, right? Mm -hmm. And he's gonna give you clues. That's what the Bible says, line upon line, precept upon precept. Right. Because if you don't pay attention, there's a little bit of clues in there. You're like, well, that's not, that, 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 that didn't happen during that time. Mm. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. All right, I'm sorry. Let's keep going. Okay. We're in verse 2 again. Mm -hmm. Merodach is broken in pieces. Her idols are confounded. Her images are broken in pieces. For out of the north there cometh up a nation against her, which shall make her land desolate, and none shall dwell therein. They shall remove, they shall depart, both man and beast. Okay, so let's go to twofold um, witness, okay? okay? So during that time period, you had the actual Babylon, right? Which we, is the area between Iraq and Iran, okay? Mm -hmm. So you had that area. And then north of that, you got the um, Persians and the Medes, okay? Mm -hmm. So it was the Persians and the Medes, Darius, who came and took over the literal Babylon. That's right. Right? But what we're going to see is the end time Babylon, there's also a place to the north of it. Mm -hmm. That's coming against it. Mm -hmm. okay. Every time you turn on the television, you see it. But nobody's putting two and two together, okay? Mm -hmm. Let's keep going. Verse 4. In those days and in that time, saith the Lord, the children of Israel shall come, they and the children of Judah, together going and weeping. They shall go and seek the Lord their God. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Read it again for me. In those days and in that time, saith mm -hmm. the Lord, the children of Israel shall come, they and the children of Judah together. All right, so he's saying in those days, in that particular time, the, is the children of Israel and the children of Judah going to go together. That's right. Okay. Now, if you know anything about Bible history, you'll find out that during Nebuchadnezzar's time, the only people that was there was the southern king. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's right. So he's saying Judah and Israel. So he's saying, Josh, what are you talking about? So um, people that's <coughs> going to you heard this before. <laughs> Israel was once a whole nation. It was just one nation called Israel, right? Israel, right? We didn't say Israel, we said Israel. But anyway, mm -hmm. see how they say. So the king was split into two. Because you had two brothers that had beef, mm -hmm. right? And I hate to put it like that, that's how we talk. Two <laughs> brothers that had beef, right? And the king was split in two. So the northern kingdom, they called that Israel. And the southern kingdom, they called that Jew. Mm -hmm. Okay? So Israel, with, during the time of Nebuchadnezzar, was already scattered. You understand? Mm -hmm. So the time of Nebuchadnezzar, Israel, the northern kingdom, is already all over the earth. Okay? Mm -hmm. Right? And so you got the southern kingdom, Judah, that's that's why you got Jeremiah, Jeremiah, okay? Mm -hmm. Um, which say Jeremiah. He's prophesying about this time, but it's only Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Mm -hmm. So he's talking about this future time where the children of Israel and the children of Judah, both kingdoms are together and they're going back. Mm -hmm. So this didn't happen during the time of Jeremiah. This didn't happen in the time of Nebuchadnezzar. This is a future time. This never happened. Mm -hmm. yes, Has never happened. Right? So we're talking about our future time, you dig? So let's, let's keep going. Going and weeping, they shall go and seek the Lord their God. They shall ask the way to Zion, to Zion with their faces there the thither toward, saying, Come and let us join ourselves to the Lord in a perpetual covenant. Alright, so here we go. So not only are Israel and Judah going together, but they're asking the way. They ask going to ask me, like, how like how, how do we get there? Like, um, it wasn't enough for it says the um, part of the scripture where it says set up the way marks. In other words, like this, this, this talking into like a map almost. Mm -hmm. In other words, like show us on the map how to get there. Wow. Now, if <laughs> any of us went to Israel, we'd be like, hey, I mean, we in Egypt. We said, oh, just go to Israel. We'd be like, what? what, what, what the, how, how we get there? Hey, well, what highway? Um, mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Somebody got a map? <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Uh -huh. So they're showing they've been removed from that. You follow me? They're in, a, they're in a new period where they're not familiar with all these things. Right. So they're asking the questions. Okay? So if, it, if you was northern or southern kingdom at that time, they'd be like, hey, go back home. They'd be like, all right, we out. <laughs> Yo, we like, you know what I'm saying? If you're Babylon, you, you're further away. But let's say you're in Egypt. Good Lord. The just between Egypt and Israel is something similar to like South Carolina and Georgia. It's not far. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. So you'd be like, hey, let's just go back. So, but these new group, this new group of people that's from the northern and the southern kingdom now are just, they have no clue what to do. So they're asking questions. But they also want to be rejoined in this covenant, like tomorrow we'll talk about covenant, right? 
in this covenant with Christ, what you're going to understand is the word testament means covenant. That's right. That's what it means. Mm -hmm. All right? But anyway, let's keep going. That's something. Come and let us join ourselves to the Lord in a perpetual covenant that shall not be forgotten. My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. They have turned them away on the mountains. They have gone from mountains to hills. They have forgotten their resting place. Oh, oh, oh. Oh. They don't forget it. But this is a different time period, you understand? Like if it was during that time, matter of fact, when when um Cyrus gave the decree, they just left. Yeah. Right? So if you go through history, they in Babylon, never should else is there. Cyrus comes to take the kingdom in one day. Yeah. It's a reason. Remember, when it's two or three, right? Mm -hmm. Cyrus took the kingdom in one day. It's going to happen the exact same way next time. Okay? Oh, wow. But Cyrus took the kingdom in one day. And he was like, hey, let's go back. And they just went back. Because they was familiar with the area. They knew they didn't forget who they were, right? Yeah. right. It's only the time, it's only this time period that we in the state that we don't know who we are. Mm -hmm. Okay? All right, let's keep going. All that found them have devoured them, and their adversary said, We offend not, because they have sinned against the Lord, the habitation of justice, even the Lord, the hope of their fathers. All right, check this out, check this out. All right, so it says, All that found them devoured them. Now, we were split up by really like three different kings. It was um, um, the Greeks, right? I'll dig into them a little bit, probably most of them tomorrow. Um, the Greeks, the Arabs, and um, oh man, and some of the Hamites. Basically, they were all in um, collusion. You, I don't know if you ever read the scripture of um, Psalms 83, mm -hmm. right? And it talks about the conspiracy among the nations. They all came together like, hey, look, we got to do something about these people, right? And mainly because of this, if you look at the nations that can, that, um, that decided they were coming together on this thing, which is the Arabs, the Greeks, uh, again, and some of the Hamites. The reason why they did that is because of their forefathers. There you go. You understand what I'm saying? So Ishmael had beef with Isaac, mm -hmm. right? Esau had beef with Jacob. Mm -hmm. So you got these children, they're like, hey man, not only are they God chosen people, but these people are the people who kicked our ancestors out of the land. Okay. You, you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So they had historic beef with us. Then you got Moab. The Bible talks about that's another group that, that was involved in this. Mm -hmm. Moab is, is Lot's children. That's our cousins. For the moment, you see what I'm saying? That was his nephew, right? So we got lots of children in the house. Like, man, you know, me and, me and Abraham was chill, and he keep us out. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because you're reading the scripture where um, Lot had to leave. Check this out. Check this out. Lot had to leave before Abraham, Abraham could be blessed. Mm -hmm. Do you understand that? Mm -hmm. Go read the scripture. The Lord said he had, he had to um, send him away first. Yeah. So. He didn't get that inheritance either. So all these people who didn't get an inheritance that we were supposed to get, they was like, hey, look, let's take it back. Let's snatch it back up. So that's the reason why um, they participated in it. You, when, you, when you learn about the Spaniards, you learn about um, Rome, which is Greece, mm -hmm. their involvement in it. We're going to talk about that. And then, then you got the Arabs. Who, and the Arabs to this day um, had a beef with us. <laughs> Even though they might not want to admit it. That's why they pushed um, Islam on us. When they're the people who participated in the slave trade, they sold us in the slavery. Mm -hmm. Brothers run around thinking they woke, but they don't understand. They don't be people that um basically can't deliver this up. <laughs> anyway, let's keep going. Verse yeah. eight: Remove out of the midst of Babylon and go forth out of the land of the Chaldeans, and be as the he goes before the flock. Okay, all right. We're gonna read a couple more of these verses real, real, real fast, right? When it says, "Remove out of the midst of Babylon and go forth out of the land of the Chaldeans," all right, check this out. So. Let's say if I'm um, looking at this from a um, let's say European perspective. So I see the word Chaldean. So, so it's specific now. We're talking about specific people. It says Chaldean. So this can't be talking about people back then. What we're going to find in scripture is God always associates the people with the nation, even though they might not actually be from that nation. Mm -hmm. If they're living in the nation. Y'all understand what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. Like, for instance, if we go back to the time when we was in captivity in Egypt, right? <laughs> All right, so one of the little known facts about what happened in Egypt was we think that we were the only people in Egypt at the time when we sold into slavery in Egypt. I mean, when we put into slavery, mm -hmm. we were sold into slavery. Um, but you had nations from all over the world there. From all over the world. That's right. Right? Because the scripture says that. Because the scripture says when the famine went forth, nobody had food. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. So nobody else had food. So all these different countries had to come all the way to Egypt to get food. So let's say if you're in Babylon, you have to come all the way to Egypt to get food. How are you going to bring that food back? 
<laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's gonna be spoiled by the time you get it back. Mm -hmm. So a lot of them nations stayed in Egypt. Mm -hmm. And if you ever see them wall paintings, you'll yeah. see how many like um like they had this one wall painting in Egypt. They had like it was called the Gate of Something. I forget the name of it. But it showed all the different types of people that was in Egypt at the time. Mm -hmm. So, but all those people were considered to be guess what? Egyptians. Yeah. Uh -huh. You understand what I'm saying? Right. So. Even though some of them weren't actual blood born Egyptians, they went with um, what we call Ethiopians, because mm -hmm. Egyptians were Ethiopians. That's what they were. They were by their own rights. They came up from the Nile and they followed up and went up to North, North Africa. But, um, but again, but the people that lived in the area and the people that associated themselves with those people were considered to be Egyptians. Mm -hmm. So um, the Babylonians or the Chaldeans are the people that associate themselves with Babylon, regardless of what Babylon is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They call us African American. We are neither, <laughs> right? But we live in the country, so we're considered that. Right. Gotcha. You understand? Mm -hmm. So that's how you got to look at scripture, because God does it a couple of different times. He'll, he'll name a specific group of people, but He'll hearken to the to the forefather. So you, you see what I'm saying? Because people can migrate. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? If I can be right here, then I'm over there. But God's still tracking us down because He He's telling us the spirit behind us. Yeah. 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 Right. So let's keep going. Verse 9. For lo, I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon an assembly of great nations from the north country, and they shall set themselves in array against her. From thence she shall be taken away. Their arrows shall be as of a mighty expert man. None shall return in vain. Okay. <clears throat> let's backtrack a little bit because I forgot to mention this. I'm going to show you where um, looking at things from uh, a Greek slash um, Western European uh, mindset can mess you up real bad. Like if you read verse 8 when it says, be as the he goats before the flock. I read it a couple times. And I'm like, he goats before the flock. What is that? That's a very strange phrase, right? Because yeah. you read in the scripture, the Bible always talks about the goats and the sheep being yeah. separated. Mm -hmm. Do you feel what I'm? Do you get what I'm feeling? Yeah. I'm getting, right? So if the goats and the sheep are separated, why would the he goats be before the flock? That means leading the flock. Why would goats, who are symbolic as rebels, mm -hmm. be the be the leaders in the flock? Right. right? Mm -hmm. Well, if you go back and you, you see the um the Hebrew word for the word he goat in that text is not he goat, it's ram. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what is ram? The ram, the ram is the uh, male sheep. Probably, mm -hmm. and he's the protector of them. He, he's the defender. He's the one that defends himself. Mm -hmm. The sheep can't defend themselves. So he says, "Go back to the land and be as the he goes before the flock." He said, "Go back and establish it." Mm -hmm. You follow me? Yeah. Right. Because goats, check this out. Goats and sheep. I had to read this up. Now I don't know nothing about farming. Okay? Hey, it's just a real farm. So I had to read about it. But when I read about it, it was talking about how um, sheep and goats they eat similar stuff, but they don't eat the same thing. And there's certain things that's in a diet that a goat might, that a goat eats, particularly copper, particularly copper. He eats things with copper in it, not copper itself, not like wire. Right. <laughs> so he needs, he needs that supplement. But sheep don't need that. But if sheep eats that copper, or they have that copper in his diet, he gets sick. So the things they eat, so that's why the Bible talks about separating sheep from goat. Because you can't eat what the goat eat. Right. Uh, you follow me? You can't be like the goat. Because the goat can get in that trash, he'll eat that trash. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's the problem. So and not only that, with the sheep and the goat coming together, they had this thing called a geek, which is the funniest word I've ever heard in my life. <laughs> but <laughs> uh, a geek. But a geek is something that most most of the time they have a really hard time surviving. Right? Um so this this um intermarriage between a geek, I mean the sheep and the goat is something that that leaves his offspring weak. Mm -hmm. Right? Not being what unequally yoked together. Yeah. You follow me? Mm -hmm. Why? Because you can't raise a household properly. Mm -hmm. One person is going one way, the other one is going the other. Mm -hmm. What happens? Well, who does it affect? The offspring. Mm -hmm. Right now, in our homes, right? Our homes yeah. are divided. Why? Because the um the female going one way and the male enough. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Right? Yeah. And the offspring is, is, is fractured, right? right? To the point where they gotta be healed. Like in our homes, in our in our neighborhoods, they're not. They fall apart from that. Mm -hmm. So going back to so we're separating the sheep, the sheep and the um, and the goats, that's where they're coming from. But at the same time, so the he goats would not be with the flock. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? But that's the way they translate it. So when you read these scriptures, you gotta study them out. You gotta get your accordance. You get the apples. Get the dog on free. Get the dog on free. <laughs> Look at these words. The spirit will need you. 
Going back to this about the merging between the two, right? Mm -hmm. Um, like we saw about earlier. That's why you can't throw away the church because a lot of brothers, you know about a history, you want to throw away the, the spirit. You know what I mean? Yeah. The spirit what leads and guides you in all, all truth. truth. So you read the scriptures like, well, you know, what the rock? That don't sound right. <laughs> the spirit is telling you that. Then you go and you search it out. That's that's, that's really all you need. Yeah. Anyway, when it says, I will raise up, call, come against Babylon and assembly, a great nation. And I'm going to speed it up in a second. I'm actually going to go through the slides. I'm going to tell you who the nations are. Um, they already assembled already. Like, they already went. Okay? okay. And it said, they set themselves array against her. Uh, from then she should be taken, and the arrow should be as a mighty expert man. The word mighty is Gibor. Mm. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, the word Gibor is what they used to um, call the giants. You follow me? Mm -hmm. There's two different words used for them. One is Nephilim. I don't know if you ever heard of yeah. Nephilim. Yeah, heard of the other one is Gibor. Right? So what it's saying, it's saying intelligent. Mm. You understand what I'm saying? So it's saying that the weapons they use are intelligent. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. So when we think about intelligent, we think about smart weapons. That's what we call them right now. Okay? Mm -hmm. Think about things like guided missiles, those, those types of things. Those are the things that the Bible is talking about. Those things, those weapons are being um, procreated yeah. against Babylon. And it's the reason being that, that why you know they do all this because Babylon, like the scripture says, has made the nations mad. Mm. Okay. So a long time I read that scripture, made the nations mad. What does that mean? I thought like crazy, like they all crazy because you know Babylon did this to them. Nah, it means literal mad. Right. Right. You turn on the news, you see. All these nations all of a sudden being very angry for no reason. They like they ready to you see the, the tricks. Well, that, I can't even pronounce that right. Britain leaving the um, EU. What do you call that? Brexit. Brexit. Yeah. Somebody can pronounce it, but I can't. Okay? <laughs> Thanks, Jay. So, um, <clears throat> say that to say, um, they get tired of the system. People are getting tired of um, what's going on, the oppression that's coming from the system that's set up right now. They're mad. The nations are angry. Mm -hmm. You follow me? So, if you go back to Revelations, when it's talking about Mystery Babylon, right? What it says, it says the nations hate her, and they burn her with fire. Mm -hmm. All, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so, let me start running my mouth about that chapter. Thank you for reading that for me. We've been reading all day with some chapters, so I ain't getting all day. Y'all be like, man, just run me out there. You're not going to do that. All right, so we're going to keep moving. So, first point, it says, speak this to the people, right? Declare ye this among the nations, publish and set up the standard. Seal not. In other words, don't hide this prophecy. Let them know it. They got to know it, right? Hello. Say Babylon is taken. Baal is confounded. Baal is the god that they worship. Baal, B A L B A L, Baal, right? What does Baal mean? Somebody tell me. Lord. Right? She says, people come, come to me in that day and say, Lord, Lord, have you not prophesied thy name? And then I name cast out devils, right? But if you say a Lord, Lord, have you said a name? No. You said a title. You baptize somebody in Father, Son, and Holy Ghost, you done did what? Said title. Those are not names. You gotta say the name. You follow me? So that's the reason why we again we talk about the King James translation. You see all these places, but it says, uh, I am God, my name is the Lord. His name is not Lord. Right? Lord is a title. Mm -hmm. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah. So that was put there, right? The name is, uh, some people say Yahuwah, some people mm -hmm. say whatever. The Old Testament name is how they pronounce it, Y-H-W-H, right? Mm -hmm. That was the name. And there's a reason why when it's saying a name, it's meant to say a name. Read the New Testament. Jesus Christ says, whatever you do in my name. Right? Do all things in my name. <laughs> Cast out devils in my name. So the name has to be, has to be spoken. It says, all power is given, given to me. What? In the heaven and earth. It says, there's no other Name. Given unto men what we, what we must speak. You did. So you got to have the name and have the power. Mm -hmm. So they would speak the name of power. But when they translated, they took it out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay? So again, and Baal, well, if he's the enemy, Baal, the Lord, is the enemy. Our God has a name. Okay? Amen. But anyway, um, say the Babylon is taking Baal is, is confounded. Merodah, which means thy rebellion. Now, he has two different titles. So God has given you the titles of this place. First of all, this place is rebellious, right? Because the original Babylon is what? It was in rebellion against That's God. Right. That's right. You dig? So in this new place, every time Babylon pops up, it's trying to take down God and his peace. Uh -huh. Okay? So this current Babylon is doing the same thing. So what is they They promote to the word, first of all, the Lord, instead of <laughs> the real Christ, is part of it. Also, they give the world homosexuality. They give the world um, uh, 
pornography. They're giving the world um, all this corruption. Mm-hmm. Everything that you know that's corrupt is coming out, is coming from Babylon. Okay? So it says, Thou rebellion. Rebellion is broken into pieces. Her idols are confounded. Her images are broken into pieces. Those things haven't happened yet. They're about to be. I guess I need to say this. There's another scripture that we're not, we not really getting into today. When it says her, her um, idols are confounded, her images are broken into pieces. Today, we don't have actual statues. Well, we do, but that's not what people are praying to, right? People pray. People worship people. Mm-hmm. They try to be like people. They, they want to be like Beyonce. They want to be like Jay Z. They mm-hmm. want to be whoever, whatever the person that, that they done start in their mind that's that's important. That's their mm-hmm. idol today, right? right. Mm-hmm. So God says those people will be broken into pieces because they're the idols, right? Mm-hmm. It's gonna happen in church. I know the moment if they're hearing that, mm-hmm. it's gonna happen in church because in church a lot of times we make pastors idols. Mm-hmm. That's right. We worship them. Mm-hmm. You ain't gonna say, oh, I don't worship no pastor. Okay, when the pastor tell you to do something, the Bible says another one, you do what the pastor say, you work. <laughs> you know? So that's what it boils down to. And again, let's throw this in here real fast. <clears throat> if you read in Revelation, it talks about how the people, like the leaders in Israel, are sealed 12,000. You ever read that scripture? So many sealed 12,000. You know? They talk about what? They get a mark on their what? On their forehead. So if you go to Ezekiel, Ezekiel. Um, at one point in time, everybody turned from God and started worshiping, worshiping who? The Lord. Think of that deeper next time, right? Which is Baal. Okay. So there's worshiping Baal, right? All of them got to worshiping Baal. God talks to Ezekiel. He says, check this out. I'm going to send my people they are going to punish Israel. So Ezekiel has this vision of these, and this thing you know, all of a sudden, these angels walk into town. One of them got an ink horn by his side. Okay? And the Lord tells him, said, check this out. Go through the city and mark the ones on their forehead that cry out against the rebellion that's in the city. Yeah. Yep, say it real slow. He tells the angel says, the Lord tells the angel, go through the city and mark the ones on the forehead that are against the rebellion. Mm-hmm. Right? Against the sin of the city. Mm-hmm. Okay? So the angels go through marking everybody and says, everyone that don't have a mark on their head, or everyone that's not marked by the angels, must die. Right? Mm-hmm. So he said, check this out. Begin at the house of God. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Jesus Christ says, what? Judgment will begin yes, where? At the house First. Of God. There you go. So that's, that's about to happen. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> I got some buddies and I talked to them. I said, look, you got to make sure what you're saying is legit because you these are God's people. So it's not like we been, I ain't saying that everybody's playing church, but everybody's not playing church. Mm-hmm. The people that are playing church, you better get real serious about this because you're dealing with God's precious things. Mm-hmm. Right. 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 But anyway, our build is broken, our images are broken to pieces. I'm going to speed this up, got to be long with it. Remember, <laughs> O Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, Raise it, raise it. Now, when I was a kid, I said, Raise it, raise it. Why are they building this? Yeah. They building this? They building houses? <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> build, you know, whatever, put this house? Nah. <laughs> <laughs> What they saying is, raise means to tear down, burn it, mm. right? So when they saying burn it, burn it, burn it to the ground, right? Um, it's literally what they saying, the foundation thereof. Now notice how he talks about Edom, and then he says, oh, darn of Babylon. Mm. This is one statement. So how do you go from Edom to daughter of Babylon? Remember, O oh, oh Lord, the children of Edom that, in that day who said, Raise it, raise it, burn it, burn it, even to the foundation thereof, O oh, daughter of Babylon, who ought to be destroyed. Happy shall be he that rewarded thee as thou served us. Who's the us? Y'all pray to say it? <laughs> Who's the us? It's the Hebrew. Yeah. Read it slow again. He says, O oh, daughter of Babylon, who ought to be destroyed. Happy shall he be who rewarded thee as thou rewarded us. In other words, the people who, who that come and do this to Babylon, because it's not going to be them. It's not going to be us to do it. We're not going to do it. Yeah. But it's going to be somebody else that do it. And happy are they that treat to do her like y'all, like they did us. Yeah. You follow me? Yeah, yeah. Right? That taketh and dashes the little ones against the stones. Now, again, <laughs> this ain't going to preach well to play the places where, you know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> You know, you get what I'm saying. Mm-hmm. But it's the truth. The Bible talks about the, the, the place of Babylon, right? It being destroyed. And the Lord says that the people who destroy it, right? They're going to be happy for one reason. Because the things that happen to them is the payback for what Babylon did to the people. Mm-hmm. So you got to know who the people is, know who Babylon is. I had a conversation with somebody the other day. 
um, about the people and who the people are. I said, well, in order for you to understand the people who, who Babylon is, you got to know who the people are. The people went to Babylon. The reason why the Lord calls mystery Babylon in Revelation, yeah. and in Jeremiah calls it the same thing, you call it mystery, mystery Babylon, you call it Babylon, is because who was in Babylon? Judah, Benjamin, and Levi. Mm -hmm. All right? They were sold into slavery into Babylon. So whatever Judah, Benjamin, and Levi are, that's where Babylon is. Because mm -hmm. their captivity is by Babylon. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. The Assyrians took the northern kingdom. The Babylonians took the southern. Mm -hmm. okay. Right? So that's what we're going on. So we're talking about Babylon, talking about Babylon. I'm going to try to speed it up. All right, here we go. So, I'm not, yeah. not calling them Babylon. I'm not calling them Babylon. They what I'm saying. They're a mystery. They, they definitely are. a mystery. Yes, they are. Right? So, all over the all over, um, United States right now, everybody going, wigging out uh, from the one person to the other. I'm not even worried about them, but I'm worried about the spirit that's behind them. Right. Right? And the spirit is Babylon. Mm -hmm. Okay? And that's what we're going to talk about. Um, because... <clears throat> Even in the natural, even in the natural, they are not the people that are making decisions. That's right. 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 So the people that are making decisions, we about to dissect them, and then, then you gonna find out why God calls Edom our problem. Same, same, same phrase. Okay. But anyway, let's get into this. <laughs> let's keep moving. All right. So, fifty fours. There are. Things in scripture that point that might be either way. Either way. If we read Jeremiah 30, which is the time of Jacob, um, 30 or 31, Jacob's trouble or whatever, it talks about this time and all these different things, these bad situations happening, happening to Israel, right? And then you see this verse, which is pretty interesting. Set thee up way marks, make up the Hippahis, set thy heart toward the highway. Who's he talking about? Talking about Israel. Go back. That's basically what he's saying. Turn again, O virgin of Israel, turn again to thy cities. In other words, the place of your heritage, right? Mm -hmm. How long would thou go about, O thou backsliding dart? Check this out. For the Lord hath created a new thing in the earth. Mm -hmm. A woman should compass a man. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay. <clears throat> so this is the same time in Jacob's trouble. You read up on them, up early in them verses. Yeah. Like, the Lord asked the question, he said, what is this? He says, is a man travailing with child? In other words, is a man having a baby? Mm -hmm. He says, why, every, why is everybody crying out? Why, uh, what, what's happening? Right? And then he starts going to all these different verses about Judah and Jerusalem, the things they're going through. Right? Mm -hmm. So, and then when we get to the end of, into the 31st chapter, he says, the Lord will do a new thing. A woman should compass a man. Even if Hillary don't become president, that verse is being played out as we speak. Mm -hmm. Right? Because why? In our own communities, and this, again, had this conversation with BX. This conversation with some people in the past. They took it the wrong way. This is not what I'm saying, right? What I'm saying is, <clears throat> you know the biblical order. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Men are supposed, supposed to be leaders. Right. 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 But they're not. Now, right. Right? right? So in our homes, who leads? The female. Mm -hmm. Right? Who's the one bringing home the bread? The female. Mm -hmm. Who's the one that's most educated? The female. Matter of mm -hmm. fact, the black female is the highest demographic, highest, highest educated demographic in America right now. Mm -hmm. Right? Wow. Um, period. So the um, black female. So we're seeing this, this this whole shifting that's going to happen. Even if Hillary Clinton don't become president, the concept of this of the woman superseding right. the man is already yeah. right. That's, that's real. Yeah. 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 That's that is real. real. Right? So if she actually is the president, I don't know. Um, my guess is that she is just because the people of Edom love her. Um, and they don't like the other guy as much. They kind of like him, like him too. So let's keep going. All right. Factors of the seven. I put that because there's this old Ritz album that's called Back to the Seven. <laughs> anyway, all right, so Donald Trump found this out yesterday. It's pretty interesting. On the day of the inauguration, if Donald Trump actually wins, he'll be, he'll be 70 years old, seven months, and seven days. Hmm. Pretty interesting. On top of the year, which is, um, what, like last month when Rosh Hashanah happened? It's last, it's last month? Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, so this year, Rosh Hashanah is actually year 5777, right? In the time of the Jubilees. <clears throat> so, I know some people online and look at that. It's, oh, that means he's going he gonna to save America. <laughs> I don't know about that. Um, not going to scripture. Uh, but, it's interesting. You see what I'm saying? I'm just going, I said, pick your poison. Why am I saying this? Because no matter who, whether it be Hillary or it be Trump, whoever gets that office, 
God's going to fulfill His scripture regardless. Yes, yeah. yes, right? That's right? So let's here we go. So I'm gonna show you some um <clears throat> links to Edom before we get into it. Now we're gonna start talking about Edom, right? So talking about Babylon. The reason why we're going into Edom because we read in that scripture in Ezekiel, Edom and Babylon are tied in together. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All right. <clears throat> Remember, O oh Lord, the children of Edom in the day of Jerusalem, who said, "Raise it, raise it, burn it, burn it, <clears throat> even to the foundation thereof, O oh, daughter of Babylon, walk, walk to be destroyed." Here we go. Jeremiah 49, 20 through 22 says this. So my Edom now. Therefore, hear the counsel of the Lord that he had taken against Edom and his purposes that he had purposed against the inhabitants of Teman. Who? Anybody know who Teman is? Esau, one of Esau's sons. Okay? Mm -hmm. One of his descendants. All right? Here we go. Surely the, the least of the flock shall draw them out. Surely he shall make the inhabitants desolate with them. The earth is moved to the noise of the fall, and the cry of the noise um, was heard in the Red Sea. Here we go. Behold, he shall come up. And fly as the eagle and spread his wings over Basra. So where's Basra? Basra is a city in Edom. Okay? So he talks about the city in Edom and God overthrowing it. That actually happened. That's actually been fulfilled. The city of Edom actually already been overthrown. It happened like a, yeah, I don't know how many years ago. But God says when Edom was, de was destroyed, he said that Edom says this. You're going to overdie or read about this. Let us go and rebuild the desolate places. So they moved from Basra and went to other places and started building those places up. You understand? Mm -hmm. So Edom wasn't destroyed. They was scattered, for lack of a better term. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> but um, to break it to break it down a little bit further, the place where Edom is is modern day Jordan. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So Jordan is Edom. Okay? Now, let's go over to Jeremiah 50, because we talk about Jeremiah 50, right? Mm -hmm. Here we go. The king of Babylon <clears throat> had heard the report of them, and his hands were waxed feeble. In other words, he getting scared. Anguish took hold of him, as, and as the pangs of a woman in travail. Check this out. Behold, he shall come up from a lion from the... So they have patience and strong. So he's talking about Babylon, and he's talking about the, um, him coming up from Jordan, and then you talk about God coming up from Jordan, which Basra is you know, in that same area. Right? So the two things are tied in together, this concept of Jordan and this judgment and Edom and Babylon. You, you see what I'm saying? It's kind of like the same phrase. Let's go over it a little further. Right? I don't know if you've ever seen this. This is from Petra in Jordan. That was their capital. This is the eagle of Jordan, of, of, of Edom. If you've ever seen that picture or not, this is their symbol. Okay. Right? So you can see right here. You got the um, arrows right here. You got the, um, the spicy kind of sauce right here. Mm -hmm. It's almost identical right, to the right. United States. Mm -hmm. Eagle. You got Rome in the middle, which that was one day symbols. You got Babylon, which is the bear, I mean, um, the lion. And England, who also has the lion. So you know you got the lion and you got the eagle, right? Mm -hmm. So if Edom is the eagle and America was found by people who came from England, whose, whose um, symbol was the lion, I wonder what happened if you put those two things together. You get the griffin. Right? The griffin of King Edward III's um, beast is an ancient mythical beast. It was considered to be a beneficent creature, saying courage or strength combined with guardianship, diligence, swiftness, and keen vision. Right? Mm -hmm. So this was a British symbol, and this this one of the symbols of British royalty mm -hmm. is the griffin. It's the combination of the eagle, which the Bible always considers Edom with the eagle. Mm -hmm. Go through the scripture. It says, um, Though thou lift thy nest, make thy nest amongst, amongst the stars, from this I will bring you down, says the Lord. Talking about eagle. On, on and on. About the, all these symbolism of the eagle and the eagle, right? Yeah. So, if that's the case, we seem to keep the whole um, relationship between the eagle, um, the British, who founded America, right? Mm -hmm. Rome, which is that, that's their symbol also, mm -hmm. right? And Babylon, all those, two th all those things tied in together, right? So, Let's talk about the people who helped found America. Okay? Now, I don't know if y'all have heard this. I know you pretty, pretty sure had to be more than talking about it, right? <laughs> so, um, but if you really dig into the actual origins of America, who founded America, who founded the, um, the Revolutionary War, you're going to find the Jewish people. Yeah. And the Jewish people. Jewish. Jewish right? <laughs> Not the Hebrew people, but the Jewish people. They were buying it all. Revolutionary War, founded by them. Every other war, founded by them, right? They fund all the wars, right? 
Where did they come from? They came from England. Okay? <laughs> the Balfour Declaration, you had some Jews that were in England. You had some that were in Germany. Right? Mm -hmm. The Balfour Declaration came about, and then they all came to Jerusalem. That's right. Y'all seeing the connection right now? Mm -hmm. Okay? So right, let's keep, let's listen to this guy. One second, I don't have no idea. You know what? We're not going to listen to him. Because I got, I got them quotes already real bad. Because the audio is playing through the laptop. One second, hang on. You know what you want to do? I got those quotes. I'm just going to keep them. Show you a video. I'm just going to talk over this because, again, the audio is not um, playing loud enough. This dude um, was one of the prime ministers of uh, Israel talking about 9 11. And if you hear him talking, he's talking like he's. Um, basically, what he's saying is without that event, there'll be no clarity, clarity of purpose and there'll be no world order. In other words, um, no way to organize. Um, this war, this war against terrorism to try to civilize what's going on. You know, you know what I'm saying? And you know what? Um, because I got an auto, I'm just going to skip most of the video just in case we we'll consider actual um, quotes. So anyway, if I if I play the rest of that video, what's going to show you is um, the beginning of the war, and this is other guy who's a senator, and it's the, um, after World War. Oh, World War II. Good Lord, I got sidetracked with audio. <laughs> um, after 9/11. There was a senator that went and talked to the guys about where we're going to go next. He's like, well, we're going to Afghanistan and fight these guys, right? He said, we're going to Iraq first. He's like, well, why are we going to Iraq? He's like, well, to the truth, I don't know. <laughs> that was his answer to the guy. Oh, wow. And um, he was like, well, after that, there's going to be in a series of wars trying to take down terrorism. So he started naming off the which countries. He said, um, Iraq, Iran, um, Syria, which we're in war right now. Um, North Korea, these are all the countries that he named off. And he said, in, in what time span? He said, well, you're looking at about seven years. Now, it, it happened to happen in the seven year span. It's a little bit longer than that. But if you see, you watch television, those are the places that we're talking about going to war with. We're already going to war with um, Syria. We've been already with, on war with Iraq. Mm -hmm. We're talking about going to war with Iran, and now we got Russia. Mm -hmm. Okay? So let's go ahead and, um, and go through this a little bit faster. But anyway, the Third World War. Now, this quote is by Rabbi Emmanuel Rabinovich. So I say that three times fast, right? <laughs> the Third World War, which is which was surpassed in destruction, all previous contests, the same talking, okay? Israeli, of course, will remain the remain neutral. Say it again. <laughs> Israeli, of course, will remain neutral. Now, when we turn on television right now, and we see what's going on with Russia, we see what's going on with Syria, we see what's going on with all these different countries, who's remaining neutral right now? Israel. <laughs> The conflict in Syria started with Israel. Yeah. But nobody's talking about Israel. Mm -hmm. Right now we're talking about going to war with Iran. Nobody's talking about Israel. Even though Iran has said out their mouth that they want to go to war with Israel. Mm -hmm. Nobody's talking about it, right? They're remaining neutral, just like he said, right? Here we go. And when both sides are devastated, we already said, when both sides are devastated and exhausted, we will, um, somebody read it for me, that word. I'm not even trying to read that. Yeah. Arbitrate. Arbitrate? That's right, all right? <laughs> Send our control commissions. Into all red countries, this war will end for all time our struggle against the Gentiles. Wow. He said this in 1952. <clears throat> wow. Wow. Okay. At this emergency council of European rabbis in Budapest. So this guy, um, Rabbi Emmanuel Rabinovich, basically said the Third World War is going to um, surpass all the structures of the other ones. The one that's coming, because it's coming with the quickest, right? It's going to be the most destructive war of all time. They plan on going into these countries after everything is destroyed and rebuilding. 
And I'm as, as we go on, I'm asking more quotes from him at this actual conference. He said a whole bunch of other things at this conference. Like this. I'm, I'm tying the whole Edom thing again. This is a quote from him. Now, most of the time when we talk about these kind of things, people want to say, well, you anti-white. Are you pro-black? Are you pro-this or you pro-that, right? Yeah. What we're going to see in his quotes is that he's neither um, <laughs> they're neither on our side nor um, um, white American side. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. All right, here we go. Forbid the whites to mate with the whites. This is his quote. That's not my quote. All right. <laughs> Just getting that straight. <laughs> white women must cohabitate with members of the dark races, mm -hmm. right? The white men with the black women. Thus, the white race will disappear. This is his quote now. From from the mixing of dark with the white means. Oh, bad. I need to start reading sideways. Okay. <laughs> I was on track. Mm -hmm. white. <clears throat> Where is it? Where? For the mixing of the dark with the white means the end of the white man. And our most dangerous enemy will become only a memory. We shall embark upon an era of 10,000 years of peace and plenty. The Pax Judaica and our race will rule undisputed over the world. Our superior intelligence will easily enable us to retain mastery over a world of dark people. Okay, cool. Let's give a white free autos now. Um, <laughs> so, saying all that to say, you're hearing this quote, right? Now, this is what they think. This is what Zionism is about. Well, who, what is Zionism? Zionism. As a um, matter of fact, uh, for course, uh, um, tell me what Zionism is. Well, it's a group of the uh, elite of the Jewish uh, people. As uh, in some of the words, they're coming together and want to build their own homeland in Jerusalem from <coughs> there rule the rest of the world. Right, right. In a nutshell. I mean, it goes back to their book, which is the Talmud. Like, when I was a kid, I thought they were going to the Old Testament. Yeah. Church, but they just go by the Old Testament. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Why do you go by the Old Testament, huh? Um, you got a little bit older, you do some study, and you find the how evil, evil the town is. Yeah, and the right. town that talks about world domination. And they plan this world domination. But the way they do it is through financial manipulation. Mm -hmm. Right? And why do they do it through my financial manipulation? Because they're evil. Mm -hmm. Alright? Mm -hmm. Now remember the whole story about Esau and Jacob, right? Yeah. Alright? So. <clears throat> The Lord's going to bless Jacob with why? Because the blessings come through Jacob. The inheritance, everything's going to come through Jacob, right? So then you have Esau, who once Jacob inherited his um his blessing from Isaac, was left out, right? So he comes in later on, and he tries to get a blessing. But all the blessings done went to Jacob. So he goes to his dad, and he says, you know, what else? He's crying. The Bible says he's crying. He's like, Lord, what can we give you that? So he's like, okay, look, check this out. I can't give you the same blessing that Jacob had, but this is what's going to happen. You will only eat or live in the fatness of the earth. In other words, you will have the best of what the earth has to offer. Financially, um, uh, for this uh, homes, that type of thing. Things, Anything that's um, tangible, you will have the best of it. Wow. Right? Then he talks about, but <laughs> you will live by the sword. So you got these two things going on. Esau lives by the sword, but he, he only Lives and eats the fat of the land. In other words, the, the greatest things, the best financial situations. That's what he, that's what he's in. Now, if you know anything about Jewish people, they own all the financial system. Yeah. They they own they own the financial reserve. I say own, not run. <laughs> they had, um, the financial reserve is federal, not own, it's not federal, right? But anyway, um, Goldman Sachs, Freddie Mac, um, I think that's what they call it. Uh, uh, Bank of America. You name any bank, it's, it's their bank. It's the Rothschilds, the Rockefellers, and the Warburgs. Those three families, the three Jewish families. Um, our people, we love talking about the Illuminati. That's who they are, yeah. right? Yeah. They control a lot of finances. And anything you see a Negro showing his face on, they are behind it. That's what they <laughs> you playing basketball, they can they write the contracts. They own the stadiums. Wow. You doing you um writing songs, they own the labels. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Anywhere we are, they use us. Why? Because we're Judah. That's right. And Judah has the influence, That's right? right? Judah is praised. Yeah. Not only is he praised, he's the king. Right. Yeah. right? Yeah. So, for instance, like what well, people think about um, uh, black people, when people think black people in general, what do they think about? They think about black African Americans. We only 13% of the population is American. Think about that. <laughs> in America, we 13%, 13%, but yet the whole entire world, when they think black, they think African American. Yeah. Right. right? Why? Because we're in the forefront, right? We write the songs, we, we, we create the culture, right? Mm -hmm. Everything that's, that's admired in the world, for the most part, comes from us. Mm -hmm. We don't own nothing, 
Right. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> we don't even own the labels that we sing it on. Well, right. we do these songs. We don't own the teams when we go play in ball, but we got that much influence, right? Mm-hmm. But Esau knows that. So Esau's always mine, right? But going back to that, so um, if you know anything about the Jewish people during, during their history of them being a they've always manipulated the banks. That's how, that's how they got their money. And then they would finance wars, right? So they would live by the sword, and they would live only in the path of the land, wow. right? So, but saying all that to say, so they got a group of people, and they all, I will say this just to give them some credit. They don't all believe the same thing. Mm-hmm. Put it out there. Not all Jewish people believe the same thing. There you go. Right? Mm-hmm. Because you got the Zionists mm-hmm. and you got what they call the Orthodox. Okay? Yeah, that's right. mm-hmm. So the Zionists, their plan is, okay, we're gonna we're gonna control everybody. We're gonna, literally in their book, in the town, it says that we'll all be slaves to them, they're gonna they control us and blah 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 blah. Um but the Orthodox people, they just basically wanna they think they follow the um, like Torah, but they're not. Right? They go by they go by the Talmud also. They just don't believe the craziness. Imagine it being like the nation of Islam versus the Sunni Shiite Muslims. That's kind of like the difference. <laughs> See what I'm saying? Yeah. Like right. nation of Islam, they just want to sell bean pies and be cool. Right? <laughs> <laughs> they ain't trying to blow up nothing. You yeah. know what I'm saying? But you know, some of the Shiites, Sunnis and Shiites, they be going at it. You dig yeah. what I'm saying? So that's the difference. So you got the designers who like world domination of you know by any other, by any other means, and then you got um, the Orthodox who just you know they want to um, eat their filter fish, you know, and it's, you know speak Yiddish and be funny, you know. What I'm saying? Like, but seeing all that to say, <laughs> go back to my boy Boris, which did a fantastic one of the best presentations I've heard about this. This subject is you got the um, Zionists who um, and when you do your research, you find out we're in line with Hitler. That's right. Okay. And that's what that was all about. Now, y'all heard us talk about it before. It, was, mm-hmm. it wasn't it um, was uh, the Germans versus the Jewish. It was the Zionists versus the Orthodox. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were trying to wipe all them out because they wanted to take over the world. Right? Right. So they didn't want nobody that was kind of um, on the fence, if you kind of get what I'm saying. But that's the reason why they feel like that the white man is their number one competitor. Right? Because who runs things? It's the Jewish people and the white people. They're the people which both of these things are both are white. Do you get what I'm saying? <laughs> right? Two different ethnic groups of people. Right, so he's saying what? Let's try to figure out a way to influence um, black men to be with white women, which I'm not against that. I'm just saying what they said. Oh, you two got heard. I'm not against that. <laughs> I'm just saying what they said. Okay. <laughs> they're trying to eliminate, you know, um, uh, basically their population again, um, because they feel like they're they're, they're number one competitor. Let's. Um, I'm not gonna read over that again because you may did. I'm gonna to read some of these other quotes. Let's keep moving. All right. Again, more quotes from Edom. Yeah, we read it for Our interests in Washington are greatly extended with point four program, the Colombo um, plan for developing industry in backward areas of the world so that off that after the industrial plants and cities of Europe and America are destroyed by atomic warfare, the whites can offer no resistance against the large masses of the dark races who will maintain our unchallenged technological superiority. And so with the vision of world victory before you Go back to your country and intensify your good work until that approaching day when Israeli will reveal herself in all her glorious destiny as the light of the world. All right, so you heard the part when it says um, Europe and America are destroyed by what? Atomic warfare. Atomic warfare. Atomic warfare. This is 1952. Okay? Wow. So um, they was planning this whole um, uh, conflict between Europe and America from way back then. Okay? And again, who finances the wars? They do. So when they say these things, like, oh, man, they, they trying to do it. No, they the ones who finance the wars. That's the reason why going back to the, uh, the beginning of this presentation, I told you about Hillary Clinton and why I think Hillary Clinton probably be behind it, because she's a big-time Netanyahu um, Israel, Israeli supporter, right? She's behind them. They love, they love Hillary. They don't like um, Trump as much. They don't mean he won't be president, but... They love the Republicans, but they like the stat- they like the establishment of Republicans, like the old school Republicans. They don't like these fringe people, right? Mm-hmm. They feel like that Trump maybe can't be as controlled. But at the same time, you get an argument a lot of times. I always remember Trump made money in New York real estate. Yeah. Who the heck you think controls New York real estate? <laughs> yeah. If you think anybody else but them all who controls the New York real estate, you idiot. You need to be <laughs> right? So. <laughs> That's where he got his money from. That's how he made his money, making those deals with Edom. You understand what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Right? Let's keep moving. All right. Um, can you read it for me? Jeremiah 49, 23-25. Concerning Damascus, Hamath is confounded and Arpad. 
for they have heard evil tidings. They are faint-hearted. There is sorrow on the sea. It cannot be quiet. Damascus is waxed, feeble, and turneth herself to flee. And fear hath seized on her. Anguish and sorrow have taken her as a woman in travail. How is the city of praise not left, the city of my joy? Okay, what, were, what chapter is that, Samantha? 49. 49. Um, when we were in the 50 and 51, right? So you see the order that's going in. This is talking about Damascus. <clears throat> Now, um, if you study um, like Isaiah 17, you start talking about the burden of Damascus and everything that happens in Damascus. Um, what you'll find out is that's being played out as we speak. As we speak, Damascus is Damascus hasn't been hit yet, but Aleppo, um, all those other um, cities that's in um, Syria are being destroyed. They're being wiped out. You understand what I'm saying? Why? Because of one reason. God says, when we read at the beginning of the chapter, it says that they'll be happy. Why? To do to them mm -hmm. as they've done to us. Yeah. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They will be happy. They'll, they're going to be more than happy or they're going to be aggressive in doing to them what was done to us. Well, if you turn on television, see what's going on in Syria, and you compare what happened to the slave trade and what happened to the scattering of the Hebrews, you'll find it's the exact same process. Right? What happened? Well, I had this video. Again, I ain't going to do There's a video that talks about all these countries all of a sudden turning against Assad. And I don't think Assad did what they even said he did, but they claim he used chemical weapons against his people. Once that happened, all these countries coming in and bombing Syria. At one point in time, they had over like, 12 different countries in there that were attacking the Aleppo and different things like that. Not Aleppo, but one of the other cities in Syria. Once that happened, the Syrians, what? Fled. They've been scattered to where? The four corners of the earth. Remember um, a couple of years, like what, beginning of this year, they talk about the Syrian refugees. And everybody was worried about the Syrian refugees. Yeah. Why? Because they come to America. They come, to, um, they come mm -hmm. to Europe. They all over the place, being scattered all over the place. Why? From the destruction of their city. Mm -hmm. 70 AD, what happened? Jerusalem was destroyed. Yeah. What happened? We were scattered. Yeah. Four corners of the earth. As it was done to us, so shall it be done unto them. Mm -hmm. And what, what scripture was that again? Oh, what you might about? Um, about the scattering. Of the Syrians, just as oh, oh no no no, not necessarily about the Syrians. But in the scripture, where it's talking about, um, it says that in general, it says, it says, oh, like okay. Jeremiah thirty. Okay, right. In Jeremiah thirty talks about. I need to pull out that. I pull up that scripture. But in Jeremiah thirty, it talks about. Um, let me read it for y'all right there. That's good, bro. All right, um, Jeremiah 30, 15, going out through 16. It says, uh, <clears throat> Why cry thou for thy affliction? Talking about us, right? Thy sorrow is incurable for the most of thy iniquity, because thy sins were increased. I have done these things unto thee. Therefore, all they that devour thee should be devoured. All thy adversaries, every one of them, should go into captivity. Wow. Mm -hmm. And they that spoil thee should be a spoil, and all they that pray upon thee, I will give for a prey. Right? Then we go back to the first um, slide in this. Uh, sorry. Yeah. Um, let's see. Remember it says, Psalms 137, 7 through 9 says, Remember, O Lord, the children of Edom and the day of Jerusalem, who say, Raise her, raise her um, to the foundation thereof. O daughter of Babylon, who ought to be destroyed, happy shall he be that reward thee as thou served us. Right? So you see that, that same pattern. You know, right here is talking about Babylon in um Jeremiah 30 saying everyone. Mm, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. You follow me? Yeah. So remember the northern kingdom was taken before we were taken. Yeah. So what we see in oh, uh, oh, okay. Yeah, so um so what we see in Syria is remember it was the Assyrians who took the northern yeah, kingdom. Took the northern kingdom. You follow me? So what, what they did to them is happening to them right now. They, they should throw the refugees all across the planet, right? Mm -hmm. um, not only that, if you go back to the um, transatlantic slave trade, you remember there's a um, hundred million Hebrews that died on the ships just trying to get to America, right? Mm -hmm. South America or whatever. So <clears throat> if you go to the Mediterranean, there is um, uh, uh, I, had, I used to have that video, but they went probably played on. Um, there's a memorial in the Mediterranean for all the different Syrians that have died trying to get from um, Syria to try to get to Greece. Mm -hmm. Wow. Right? That's
that same, we have the exact same thing in Grenada. If you ever go to Grenada, we have an underwater memorial for all the slaves that died on the South Carolina slave trade. Wow. So literally the exact same way, everything that they did to the Northern Kingdom is happening to them then. So you got what? Remember, it's Assyria in Babylon who took us into captivity. Yeah. So right now the Assyrians, or the, not the, all the Assyrians, but the Syrians are getting punished for that. So now it's coming to Babylon. Mm. Syria first, then Babylon. You, you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. So, wow, okay. um, oh, wow. Wow. That's, that's major. Man. <laughs> yeah. We in that time, and like I said, I wish, um, I wish I had some audio, but it's great. Same time. Y'all can see it. Before you finish with this, listen how the span is about the chemical weapons. Because this, the, like, they basically destroying Syria right now. They flatten it. Damascus is basically the only place that's left. They they, they went to uh, like the last week, um, trying to overthrow Assad. So, and the whole point is, oh, he used their um, chemical weapons against his own people. Now it's hilarious that the people that kill like uh, probably about 100 million people, we're talking about the natives plus us, us and stuff. Mm -hmm. He's worried about people being bad guys who thinks against their own people. Um, <laughs> But again, just listen to the span of, of that whole event. So you know that's the biggest star in the movie that we're obviously in. So what the president is saying there is that's the well, oh yeah, I haven't made the decision yet, but obviously we're gonna go. And I before I was against the now I'm in favor of using the chemical weapons. Now look, it is fair to say the chemical weapons did change the equation. So it's okay to adjust the new facts on the ground. So what else does the president say? We have concluded that uh Syria Thank 
Just went after them. Like, you know, all you know, all this stuff about them supposedly um, cyber attacks against America and all this sort of stuff. Keep pushing back. Putin had made the um, statement that Hillary become president, that they're going to war with Russia. I mean, going to war, um, war, war with America. That stuff is out there already. Go look up the quotes. Mm-hmm. Stuff is playing out, right? The, the king of the north, right? Um, did you, you have read it for him? Jeremiah 15, 4 and 5. In those days and in that time, saith the Lord, the children of Israel shall come, they and the children of Judah together, going and weeping, they shall go and seek the Lord their God. They shall ask the way to Zion with their faces bitterward, saying, Come, and let us join ourselves to the Lord in a perpetual covenant that shall not be forgotten. So as, as these times um, start to play out, this whole war with the kingdom of in Babylon, Israel, is going to be like, Hey, can't take the bus, so we gotta fly. Um, <laughs> we fly there, we're gonna have a guy, like, he got a mouth. Like, oh, how do we get there? They, they went, like, all of a sudden, they mind, like, man, we gotta go. Mm-hmm. Right? So that's what we're starting to get to, right? We've seen all these things already starting to um, be fulfilled, all mm-hmm. right? Jim? Jeremiah 15, 6 to 7. My people have been lost sheep. Their shepherds have caused them to go astray. They have turned them away on the mountain. They have gone from mountain to hill. They have forgotten their resting place. All that found them have devoured them. Mm-hmm. And their adversaries said, We offend no. not because they have sinned against the Lord. They have a station of justice, even the Lord, the hope of their fathers. Go on, go on Facebook and start talking about slavery. <laughs> go on Facebook. Just say right. something. Just, just, just repost something somebody had about slavery. Yeah. Somebody going there and they're going to be like, Oh, well, you know, um, why you got to keep talking about that? It's so far, far past that. I'm saying, uh-huh. with my buddies, this is the funniest story ever, right? So I'm a big, I mean, I, I know this is this dog country, you know, I'm, I'm from South Cat, so we like Clemson. You know, so number two in the nation, just throwing it out there. All right, so, <laughs> <laughs> so we watching the game, right? I'm at well, my friend's house, and, um, my, you know, some of my Caucasian friends, we're sitting there and I'm watching the game. And um, one of my buddies that like to like, battle me on YouTube, not YouTube, but Facebook, whatever reason, um, he comes up to me, and you know, the boys in this no stuff. He said, man, he going to be here today. I was like, hey, I was like, he gonna be here today. Really gonna be here today? First person, hey Josh. Yeah, right? So I'm like, okay, what's up, man? What's up? So we like, you know, it's all with love. We, we, you know, ain't that serious. And so we sitting there talking. He talking about he talking to his professor. Because me and him are going back and forth about black history, about mm-hmm. slavery, mm-hmm. about this, like I told him about our history. Again, he tells some people about our history. They, like, they didn't even hear it. They just keep moving. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So that, that kind of thing. So anyway, to make a long story short, so we talking, and then he. He's like, well, you know, man, I talked to one of my professors, you know, this black guy, he told me about some of the stuff you had said, you know, I told him about COINTEL Pro, I told him about mass incarceration, I told him about all this, these curses that came upon us. Mm-hmm. And he was like, yeah, you know, he told me, I, I kind of understand what he was saying, but it's this thing, man, he's like, you know, I understand that, that y'all had it hard, but, you know, I, I kind of look at it like myself, man, see. You know what? I went back to school, I didn't have much, but, you know, I went back to school, man, I got my degree, and now I'm doing really well. I said, really? He said, yeah, man, you know, I just, you know, I went, you know, I kind of had to, he didn't say this phrase, but you were trying to say, I put myself up on the bootstraps. Mm-hmm. And, you know, and now I'm in a different place. And I said, oh, really? He said, oh, okay, okay. So then his wife walked up, I said, well, you know, um, this is the difference between that. I was like, so let's say we run the race, right? And um, me and you at the start line. And when you start to run, I stick out my leg and I trip you up. You go running through the house. Then I take off running full speed. I like, is it possible for you to get up and try to catch me? Yeah, you might be, you might be, you saying both. You might walk me down. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But what a life you gonna lose because I done tripped you up, you know, failed, you know, stumbled something. Mm-hmm. I said that is the life of yeah. the black person. Mm-hmm. I was like, that's the difference. It ain't that you can't finish the, you can't go past the finish line. It's that you've been tripped up and you had to roll over three times to get up and then try to go to the finish line. Yeah. And then he was like, oh, okay, okay. He comes wife. I remember this story talking about how it was, you know. So hard for him, and you know, he just went back to school and he did he did well, he put us up on five eight traps. So his wife comes and I was like, Hey, how y'all doing? I said, yeah, I said, man, I didn't know y'all was back in the area. She's like, Yeah, we just got here, you know, whatever, you know. We stay with his um no 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 God, I thought about the best part. So after he told me about pulling himself up by the bootstraps, he was like, Yeah, you know, see that's the problem, you know. I ain't trying to be funny enough, you know, a lot of black people, you know, they like some little big grandma or something like that. <laughs> wow. And he's like, Wow. He, no, 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 it's not there's anything wrong with staying with your grandma, you know, it's just it's just but you know like she needs to get out, you know, and be working a little harder. Yeah. I said, oh, really? Yeah. So his wife comes and sit down, and I was like, man, so where y'all, y'all been? So oh, we just moved, we moved back to the area, whatever. You know, we, we stayed with his mom. <laughs> <laughs> I said, like, oh, really? He said, yeah, they left through my house. Oh, wow. <laughs> they left through my house. You heard what I just told you? Left through my house. Yeah. If you 
leave me a house, do you know how far ahead I would be? Oh, exactly. Yeah. If you would have left me a, a house. A house. Right. A house. <laughs> you dig? Yeah. So, but again, people can't. Why? Because they say, well, we, we offend not because they sin against the Lord. So every time we have an issue, it's because it's black on black crime. Right? Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, you know, um, you know, it's, it's you know, the, 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 the culture in the black community just sick. You know, I don't, I don't know why they keep doing these things. They kind of deal. We had a conversation. I said, well, he's like, what about black and black crime? I said, you do realize that 89% of crimes committed against white people are against white people, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. White or white crime. I said, so white white crime is probably big time. Oh, no, 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 that's reverse racism. No, 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 no. I'm okay, look. <laughs> but you get what I'm saying? Right. But again, I'm, I'm just showing you the whole yeah, concept the of it. The scripture. Yeah. But I was telling you, that's yeah. going to be the excuse. Why? Because they're going to say it's, something, it's some sin that you've done that's it's your problem. You're the reason why you like this. Mm-hmm. Fix it. And again, I wish I put this video in here, but it's a video of Martin Luther King. Last thing I'm saying about that subject. And I don't know if you have to do some, yeah, do your research on MLK. Okay. Mm-hmm. MLK okay has some issues, all right? <laughs> so, um, you know about uh, Brother uh, Malcolm? Mm-hmm. Part of me kind of feel like that Malcolm, like the world is little Malcolm, but he needs to this because he almost sounds like a prophet sometimes. Yeah, all right. he does. All right. right. So, Malcolm was like, man, <laughs> a couple of his time he sat down with the uh, uh, media, he was talking about MLK, okay, how MLK. Okay. He's got people in his pockets. Mm-hmm. That's true. Mm-hmm. MLK has people in his pockets. Yeah. Now, the reason being is because MLK had, he was a homosexual deviant. Mm-hmm. He was. If you don't want to talk about it, do some research, man. Go back and do some research about some of the stuff MLK said before he got before he got like up here. Mm-hmm. Um, he didn't really believe Jesus Christ was the way. He said that most of the times. Like literally. Don't think about take my word for it. Go look at audio of him saying stuff like this. Mm-hmm. Because he had like this Hindu um uh uh, uh what you call it? Mentor. Mm-hmm. So a lot of things, it was like this gay Hindu dude who was <laughs> basically wow. sculpting some of his views. So he went all the way there with um, where our beliefs for us being a Christian, but he believed in moving us forward. You, follow me? Mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So what happened was the FBI started wiretapping him, and they started getting all these these tapes of him doing stuff in these different cities, mm-hmm. meeting different people, mm-hmm. and it basically sounded like a sex meeting. Mm-hmm. All right. Real talk, you go look it up. I ain't trying to defame the dude, but I'm right. trying to defame the dude. Yeah, right. 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 right? So, <clears throat> anyways, when the FBI had them sex tapes on them, they was like, bro, you're going to play ball. We're going to release these sex tapes. Again, again, don't think we're going to look it up. Okay. We're going to release these sex tapes and you know, we're going to show everybody that you were wrong. Right? Mm-hmm. So, anyways, so for the most part, he had to play ball. Like, if you do your research on, um, uh, what you call that, March on Washington, mm-hmm. you'll find out that he had absolutely nothing to do with it. MLK wow. had absolutely nothing to do with March on Washington. Right, the March on Washington was an in, individually planned march that was just by people. Mm-hmm. But the FBI got caught wind of it, and then they, they went to March. It's like hey, we need somebody to basically rat um um I hate to say rally, but what's the right word? Right. Um, basically like uh pull it back in. You know what I'm saying? They probably gonna get out of hand because the original March on Washington it was going to the airports, it was going to land on tarmacs, it was going to shut the city down. <laughs> okay, so it's like man, we gotta get somebody to stop this. So they're like, hey, look, we got these tapes. And we know y'all need money because y'all believe in money. We give you some money. We're going we to expose you if you go and try to shut down the march on Washington. So here he come. When he show up, MLK. Everybody love him. So they ain't going to turn down MLK. He fighting for the people, right? Mm-hmm. So he comes on and says, look, this is what you got to do. You can only sing these songs. You can only hold up these signs. It's literally what happened. Go check it out. So this whole we shall overcome because they weren't allowed to sing anything else. Wow. wow. There's certain signs they can hold up to, to be um, politically correct. There's certain things they just couldn't do. Martin had a part in that. Right? Now, St. Arthur say this. Once he found out that after he fought for segregation and all this other stuff, there's a quote from him. He said, you know, he, supposedly right before um everything uh, was official, he was, you know, sitting around looking sad. And somebody asked him, what's the problem? He said, man, I think I integrated my people into a burning house. Wow. 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 Right? So, the reason why your boy got killed was because after he had that realization, he went back and he started doing some research. And there's a video online. I sent it to you so you can send it to the groups. So y'all see this video. Please do. But he was fired up. He was like, man, he said, he said look. Um, he was talking about um, the 40 acres of the mule. He said, our people was oppressed or whatever. I'm paraphrasing. He said, after that, it was promised, well, it was promised 40 acres of the mule. Mm-hmm. He said, and they didn't give it to us. He said, but you know what they did, though? He said, they was giving away millions of acres in the land yeah, to man. white people. You saw he saw that video? Yeah. Giving it away free. Even after they gave the, the land away, they, they bring um, they from land grant colleges to teach the people how to farm the land. 
Then they gave them almost interest-free loans to be able to get get equipment to farm the land. Wow. Basically set them completely up. Mm-hmm. So one was like, okay, look, and then he said this, he said, but they tell y'all to pull yourself up like food scraps. <laughs> <laughs> right? So he said, you know, he says, so the next time we go to we go to um, Washington, he said, I'll be asking for a check. Yeah. Don't talk about no check, bro. Anybody that talks about a check, Johnny Carter, dead. Talk about that check. <laughs> right? Because the check is the last thing that the Hebrews get before they leave. Mm. The rest of the last thing. Last yeah. thing. Go back to Egypt. Go go study the scriptures. What's yeah. the last thing that the Egyptians had to yeah. do? Yeah. They had to yeah. write that check. Right? Yeah. So, and the check spoiled them. The Bible said the Egyptian was spoiled. Think about it. He was the richest place in the world. Everybody had to come to them for food. Mm-hmm. They were set up. And then the Hebrews yeah. were like, he was the, think about this. That's the reason why Pharaoh had to go after us. Because they was dead broke. They lost everything, right? And they was, and the people do that. They're like, man, you know what? And this is people don't understand that people are like, oh man, you know, Gentiles can't be saved. Gentiles they went to Egypt. Most of the Egyptians went with it. It was a mixed multitude. That's right. The Egyptians went too. It's like, man, well, yeah, these Hebrews gonna take like everything. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? What they know left. So it's gonna be the same thing because the Bible says that they got it. If you read James, read the book of James, right? James talking to the people and he says, he says, oh man, how did that phrase go? I want to put the actual scripture, but he says, oh man. Let me read it. Let me read it. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Well, that's good. Wow. James 5. Listen to this, y'all. Good. Listen to this now. Again, we we had, before we read these scriptures, we didn't know what it was talking about. We didn't know about captivity. We yeah. didn't know about slavery. Yeah. We didn't know what, what James was talking about. This is what he's saying. Now, James 5, here we go. Go to now, ye rich men. Weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted. And your garments are moth eaten. What is he talking about? I used to think that would mean that meant, well, you know, hey, it's not that great. No. Something that's corrupted and moth eaten has been sitting up. Just been sitting right. up for years, right? It, all right, keep going. Your gold and your silver is cankered. It's rusted. That means it hasn't been put to work. It's been sitting up, it's been getting rained on. You've just been sitting on it. Alright? Here we go. Your silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you. And she'll eat your flesh as it was fire. Check this out. You have heaped up treasure together for the last days. Behold, the hire of the laborers who would reap down your fields. The slaves. The slaves that was out there busting their butt to make this country. You never paid them. Wow. Right? Oh, I ain't never seen that. Like that. Woo. Number four. Behold, again, fire. You lived in pleasure on the earth you've been, um, and been wanton. You have nourished your hearts as in the day of the slaughter. You have condemned the just and, and I mean, condemned and killed the just. And he does not resist you. You're going to wow. have wow. Wow. So, wow. so they got to write the check. Right? Man, they got to write the check. They got to write the check. That's why they're trying to hear that. You start talking about writing the check, they're going to silence you. They don't want to hear that about that check, man. Look. A couple months ago, the UN brought it to. I don't know if y'all seen it. Yeah. The UN yeah. is talking about it yeah. right, now. right now. This stuff is being fulfilled right now. The UN go. They say, look. They said y'all owe money to these to, to these Negroes for all the oppression and the, you know all that kind of stuff. Check this out. No. There, there's been economists that done the numbers. They say even with the 40 acres in the mule, the interest on the 40 acres in the mule is something to like seven trillion dollars. You understand? Something to seven trillion dollars. It's not counting the economic impact of slavery, which is something to like maybe like fifty trillion and over. We built in like America Wall Street. Wall Street came from slavery. Yes, the whole uh, uh, yes, uh, the commodities yes, were slaves. Yes, That's yes, how they built Wall Street. Yeah. That's what stocks were. Yeah. They put you in stocks because you were stocks. Mm. Right? That was the purpose. So anyway, going back to this. Check. They gotta write the check, man. Mm-hmm. What they do, it's gonna collapse. It's gonna collapse. Mm-hmm. They owe you. The same thing that happened with um with Egypt. So again, so the judge was talking about it. All of a sudden, judge died with cancer. Like man, he we know he had cancer. <laughs> 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 you know, same thing with MLK. You, you go around, you start talking about that check, man. They they gonna shut you up. And then, but look, even if we stay, if we stay. That is, people want to know how to, how to end, like YouTube, y'all watching this video, you want to know how to end racism in America? Reparations. Reparations. That's how you end racism. Because if you really pay back, not what you want to pay back, but if you pay back what you owe, then there can't be racism, because racism is a economic Economic. Well, that's good. power. That's, you got to have position to be a racist. 
You dig what I'm saying? The reason why blacks cannot do anything is they have no wealth. They... Man, let me tell you something. I seen, I was telling Jamea about it. Somebody, this, this guy that's a speaker, this professor, he did the numbers, and he said that um, it'll take 228 years for us to even cap, catch up with the average income of any white person in America. As far as they, trying to um, um, uh, close the um, wealth gap. Because wealth and money are two different things. We're making a little bit more money, but we're getting even more beat on the wealth, right? We don't own anything. We don't so we, so when we spend money in our hood, it, it lasts like 30 seconds. Yeah. Then in their in in neighborhoods, it lasts like, <laughs> like three or four days. Yeah. That's the difference. So they keep stacking up wealth. All my friends back, you know, in, back in the South Cat, especially my white friends, all of them got land. All of them got houses, all that kind of stuff. Like I said, all of them, but the majority of them. I got one of my friends, oh yeah, my, my, my auntie, this is my auntie land. This is my, my great uncle left me this land. I got this house on blue. Oh, they come from slavery. Mm-hmm. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah. So saying all to say this, um, the, the way you kill that is if we had the money to start our own businesses, people want to boycott. You can't boycott being got no businesses, man. When you gonna go buy some stuff? You can't buy no toilet tissue, you can't that get no water. That's the truth. You can't That's the truth. You will not pay the energy company when they turn on your lights. What you gonna do? We get energy from. We get energy from. It is stupid. Oh my you gotta God. have businesses. You gotta have wealth before you can have your own. What a wow. That is just real. You know, so we we have to have that, but. That's the end of it. We all money. We start our own businesses. We get on. We, we have our own bank set up. We have. We can. We can spend money in our own neighborhoods. We can grow. And see, this is the thing. I'm gonna stop running my mouth. But this, yeah, this is the difference. Right. That's the difference between us and all the other immigrants. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. Because during that time period, see, that's what black black people were thinking during that time period. Their mindset was like, we want to end Jim Crow. That's what, that's basically right. we want to end Jim Crow. Yeah. We got to do away with it because they killed us. They lynched us. They beat us. So we thought that equal um, integration. But the problem is, we didn't need integration. We needed the ending of Jim Crow. Right. Right? Because every other society that's an immigrant society, they had their own stuff. Yeah. Right? The Jewish yeah. people had their own stuff. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Germans had their own stuff. Well, we go to New York. Jim Crow. Right. Go to New York. You go go Chinatown. You look like, you know, people, and my, my wife, you know, Toronto, I got this place they call, some people call it Jew Town, where most of the Jews live at. Everybody got their own space, and but people still, but they're not stopped from being able to go in other places. Right. Yeah. You follow me? So we, we put we put Jim Crow and mm. tied it in the, the segregation, but integration, you know, we were all about businesses. Oh, yes. The guy that, that, um, that I told you about, I was listening to that speech. Mm. He said during his, his, um, his, um, Dad's time, they had a bus company. He said, don't like we had 20 buses, we had 400 buses. Mm-hmm. Right? Wow. He said, we, after the integration, we lost all of it. Wow. wow. I mean, do your research. You'll find out how, how, like, how badly that set us back. Because wow. everybody else still have it. They still have those places. You can go to these different, especially bigger cities. They still have those things. They passed down the generation. They have these businesses that they right. kept hold of. But we lost all of our businesses. We lost all our yeah. wealth. Right? Because of integration, we, we again, like you was said, we, we got put into a burning house. Now, go, let me get back to one point. Be aware, I'll be aware of the lost sheep, the shepherds have been called to go astray. They led them away on the mountains. They've gone from hill to hill. They've forgotten their resting place. You know, forgot it. All that found them and devoured them. Now, I got to throw this in here because I'm going to let you know how true this is, okay? Now, we're going to go back to history. Just, just throwing your ball about us, all right? Let me go back. All right, so. Everybody know about Negro Land. If y'all have seen the map, right? Have seen the map about Negro Land? Yeah. No. All right. But I wish I put that map in here then, all right? I'm, I'm, but I'm going to show you right here, okay? This, shoot. This area right here. That's Africa, yeah. Right, this Africa. My bad. I should have said that. It's the west coast of Africa right here, right? This area right here is called Negro Land, right? If I showed you the slave traders map, which I have on my phone, but I'll show you. Ask me after the on service, and I'll show it to you. This is Slave Coast. This is where they would come and get us. If you if you see the app, the English version of this map, it's the English version. This is technically English. They have like all these other names for these places. It was a kingdom of Judah right here. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. It's a kingdom of Judah because it was written by the slave master. That's they put it there for name of God. Mm-hmm. Anybody see this word right here? This it says Negritia. That's what that means. Negro land. That's basically what, that's the area where they got us from. See right here. It's the, the word says lamb lamb. And we're gonna focus on lamb lamb in a second. This is also called the Barbary Coast. Now, I'm, I'm giving you these names. I want you to understand in history. We've been named. The Bible says we will be a proverb and a byword, mm-hmm. right? So we have multiple, di- multiple different things that they call it, right? Mm-hmm. And if you can trace back, we're just called Negroes, right? Mm-hmm. 
So anyway, they called us Berbers, and it came from the Barbary Coast. They also called us Tureg, right? And I'm going to get to the Tureg. I'm just going to go back to that, that verse I just told you about. But anyway, who were the Berbers? You see right here, it talks about Algeria, Libya, Niger, Mali, um, Burkina Faso, um, Sub-Sahara. That's where we were. They called them people Berbers, right? And this is Limlin. Now right here is a close-up of Limlin. Here it says, according to Adrisi, the land whereabout was populated by the Jews. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay? It's one of the places we work. This is in, this is in we call this place Niger, the Niger Congo area right now in Nigeria. Okay. 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 This is where we work. Now, I'm going to show you something about these Berbers. This is a section from the South Carolina laws, right? Check this out. It says the term Negro is combined with slave Africans. Mm -hmm. The ancient Berbers. Wow. Okay? Yeah. And their descendants. It does not embrace the free inhabitants of Africa, such as the, the Egyptians, the Moors, or the Negro Asiatics. Telling you the difference. Right. So he's telling you, hey, these Negroes, they're different than all the rest of them. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> okay? Now, if you ever look up Zordofin Bible and Dash, oh, I'm bad, bad, bad. The Zordofin <laughs> Bible of Encyclopedia, it, it will tell you about us, and it will say, it read almost identical to this. Mm -hmm. And it'll say, um, the descendants of Ham, Ham was the forefather of the dark race, and they say, um, the Egyptians, Canaanites, the Libyans, and it says, not the Negroes. Mm -hmm. Okay? Just give you that. But, but again, going back to this slide right here, remember it says, all that found them devoured them, right? So this is where we were when we was lost, right? Mm -hmm. And they found us and they devoured us. Mm -hmm. Going back to Babylon, because the people, these people who did this run Babylon, right? Now, I just told you that the place that's called um, the place of the Berbers is also called Tureg. All right, here we go. The Tureg um, inhabited. Let me stop reading like that. <laughs> the Tureg inhabited the um, Sahara regions of North Africa, Niger, Mali, Libya, Algeria, Burkina Faso. Tureg is a Arabic term meaning. Check this out. Wow. Abandoned by God. Woo. Right. Hmm. Wow. Wow. They call themselves in Mohaz, right? Translated as free men. They call themselves free men, but the Arabs who sold us into slavery called us abandoned by God. Why do they say that? Because in their book, it says Allah has cursed them, the Jews, for their disbelief. Mm. So the, when we read in, um, in um, Jeremiah, they're saying that they said, hey, these people are cursed their God. That's literally what it was saying. Mm. Right? We'll go back and read that verse again. Mm. Let's read it again. Now you get this in context. Our people have been lost sheep. We scattered over there, right? They've caused them to go to the street. They have turned away on the mountains, right? They've gone from mountain to hill. We wandered. Yeah, wandered. Well, right? um, they've forgotten their resting place. All that found them have devoured them. And the adversary said, We offend not. Why? They're cursed with their God. That's what they said. When they brought us over to America, they created a new doctrine called the Hamite Curse, and they were saying the same thing. Right, yeah. They were saying, that, oh, these people, talking to people like, well, where black people come from? Oh, man, y'all um, y'all, y'all sent us a ham, man. Y'all was cursed. That's, right. that's why y'all black. Right. So that whole concept of being cursed of your God, they just translated it into this new um doctrine. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't know if y'all know this, but the Hamite Curse, you know where it comes from? You know what it is. It comes from the town. It comes from the Jewish book. That's where it started. If you want to know where the Hamite yeah. Curse comes from, now, I'm saying some stuff, but it's the same as Talmud now. Not only will did the Talmud says we were cursed to be black. It's going to sound graphic, but I'm going to give it to you. In the Talmud, it says that not only was cursed to be black, it says our hair is nappy. The reason why our hair is, I hate to say nappy, woolly, because my Bible says it. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> because when Ham was caught finding um, uh, Noah, that he snapped his head real hard, and that Tied, basically made his hair curly. But that's what this literally is in the town. You can read stuff in the town. Mm -hmm. All right. It also says that you know what they say about black men. Mm -hmm. Ain't got to say it out loud, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> that God cursed Ham to have that, but so he wouldn't um, have sexual relations with his father. They claimed that Ham tried to rape his father when he found him naked. Mm -hmm. You see the evil that yeah. these people yeah, had, exactly. right? So he, so he cursed him to have an enlarged genitalia so he wouldn't be able to do that. It says he has big eyes because it was in the dark. And he was stretching his eyes to see. <laughs> Can't you not? It's in the sound Wow. Yeah. Wow. All right? That's where this stuff comes from, man. Like, you can't make this stuff up, man. 
But again, they knew who we were, right? We were the tool rat, cursed by God, right? And again, if y'all don't know this, again, going back to Rome, if you if you study history, there's all these ties with Rome and Edom, okay? Yeah. Yeah. Um, like uh, and I get to it too too deep, but um, <laughs> right? So um, who is this? So for instance, the Greeks, the Greeks had an intimate relationship. With the nation of Edom. We see that even in the scripture. We, uh, during Jesus' time. During Jesus' time, you had the people they called Indumean, right? Indumean mm-hmm. means Edom, mm-hmm. right? Like King Herod. King Herod tried to kill Jesus Christ. He was an Indumean, right? So this whole marriage between the, um, the Greeks and the, the Edom, I mean, which is actually the Romans also, was all the way through the scripture. Matter of fact, they had some kings um, of Rome that were called the King of the Edoms. Kid you not. There's a place. Um, that they even created in, um, in Turkey. It was called Isaria. Isaria. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay? Uh-huh. So this, there's an intimate relationship between them two people. So Pope Nicholas, check this out, the paper pool of Pope Nicholas, um, Rio here, <laughs> of Portugal was issued in, um, on 18th of June, um, 1452, <laughs> legally granted Portugal the right to enslave, check this out, any and all people they encounter from Cape Borgador Morocco. Now, who was there? The Moors. Yeah. Right? So everybody will tell you about, oh man, we all Moors. I got some friends talking about it. No, no, no. The Moors are who helped settle us out, right? Mm-hmm. Where did the Moors descend from? Some of them descend from Canaanites. You get to the you know, it's whole different subject. Anyway, hey, boys, you know, Morocco on the western coast of um, Sahara, right? All through about the midway through the pool, the Pope declares all Sub Saharan Africans henceforth to be held in spiritual slavery. So this whole concept of taking us into slavery started at Rome. Rome gave the order. So how in the world are you going to learn something from the people who basically gave the order to put you into slavery? Okay. All right, let's get back to the scripture. All right? Jeremiah 50, 58, we'll move a lot faster now. Remove out of the midst of Babylon and go forth from the land of the Chaldeans and be as the he-goats, be as the rams yeah. for the flock, right? We'll get to that in a minute. Now I got another quote from your homeboy. Rabbi Emanuel Rabinovich, all right? <laughs> The Russians, as well as the Asiatic pe- peoples, are well under control and offer no objections to war. But we must wait to secure the Americans. So the, he's saying, gotta get the Americans ready. We gotta bring them to this point of war. We hope for Russia and, um, and their armies. And that's that's guy, that's a picture of Rabinovich. You know, like, I don't even know why he took that picture, but it's so accurate, right? Here we go. <laughs> Jeremiah 50, 59, we're gonna go through real fast these verses. Hello. I will raise and cause to come against Babylon a great assembly of nations from the north country, north of America, north of North America is Russia, and they shall set themselves in array against her. So if you turn on television, you're going to find out that Vladimir Putin has some buddies. China, Iran, Turkey, um, Saudi Arabia, and North Korea. They already lined themselves. This is this great assembly of nations. The Bible says they're going to raise them up from the coast, and they're going to be with the king of the north to come against Babylon. Mm-hmm. It's already starting to happen. Right? Remember, it said the arrows should be as a mighty expert man, so give a ring. None should return in vain. Right? Think about this none should return in vain. We got to, you know, <coughs> when I was a kid, it was a heat seeking missiles, right? Heat seeking missiles can never miss. So mm-hmm. if you send it, keep going where you need to go, right? That's what I'm thinking. But anyway, the word um, um, expert is a call. It means to be prudent, to be circumspect, wisely, to understand and prosper. In other words, a smart way. All right, here we go. Wow. Go real fast. Mm-hmm. Um, Jeremiah 50, 11 says, because you were glad, because you rejoiced, O daughters of my heritage, because you have grown fat as the heifer, as grass, and um, bellow as bulls. So basically what he's saying is, you've grown wealthy on the um, basic destruction of my people, the people of my heritage. And we know that. That was the case, right? And they rejoice in it. They set up um, confederate museums and all these different things. And, and I have conversations with people talking about slavery. And they don't want me to talk about slavery, but yet they go fly a rubber flag on the back of their car. Yeah. It's a trip. But again, they're still proud of it. There we go. Or they don't want to talk about it at all. I just, and this is the stuff we're going through. I just throw some of these pictures in, like the, the continual oppression that we have through all these curses. Mm-hmm. Right? Jeremiah 15 and 13 says this Because the wrath of the Lord, it should not be, because of that wrath of the Lord, talking about Babylon, it should not be inhabited. It shall be wholly desolate. Everyone that goes by Babylon should be astonished and shall hiss their plagues. Now, remember back when Rabbi Rabinovich, what he says, 
devastating nuclear war. And it would never be like um, any other of the prior wars. That war is going to be like the most devastating war in the history of the war, right? Mm -hmm. So if that happens and we end nuclear war, that means America, first of all, will be inhabitable because nuclear blasts cause like kills the ground, and kills everything, mm -hmm. right? If you know anything about like, for instance, there's a place. I think in near India, there's a desert, and it's like it has all this glass in it, and it has like um, seismic readings. And some people believe if you watch stuff like ancient aliens and all that kind of stuff on History Channel, and like some people believe that it was some kind of ancient war that was some other type of weapon, because it's all of the, the um, readings of in that place of something that would be something like a nuclear blast. Mm -hmm. Okay, so but anyway, what it did, it killed the ground, it killed life, so life wouldn't grow there, right? So the Bible talks about when Babylon is destroyed, nothing grows there. Nothing, but there's, well, there's, there's things that'll be there. But no people are there. Why? Because for people to be there, you gotta have clean water, mm -hmm. right? You gotta have food. Mm -hmm. You gotta have all these things to be able to sustain yourself. Mm -hmm. right. Okay? All right, here we go. Um, Jeremy, read it for me. Jeremiah 50 21. Go up against the land of Marathon, double rebellion, even against him and against the inhabitants of Pekos, visitation, waste, and utterly destroy after them, save the Lord, and do according to all that I have. Commanded. So you see all these nicknames. My double rebellion. So it's telling you this is this is this is the fullness of this. Look, this is the reason why we go. You notice how black folks we do stuff and then like bam, something smack us right upside the head. <laughs> and then it seems like other people like they just get away with stuff like forever. You're like, man, how they still get away with it, <laughs> right? Yeah. When the scripture talks about that, I should have got the actual um, verse out. It talks about how the Lord, um, uh, he he rewards his children swiftly. He says, but the enemies, he delays it so they, they, they iniquity might be to full. Wow. You follow me? So that's what's happening right now. That's why the, the time has been put off for so long. Like if you read in Revelation, it says, fill her cup to what? Babylon. To the double. Right? In other words, let it be filled all up. Everything that they <laughs> wow. want to do, let them do it. So they it, so it's overflowing, and then I'm going to pounce on it. I'm going to repay them for everything that they have. At the same time, though, we got double. The Bible says, check this out, Jacob has received double for his sins. Going back to what you said at the beginning of this teaching. That's why we know if we if we do right, if we do it according to the Father's the Father will, and we walk righteously, we're going to be okay. We're going to be saved out of this, right? right? Why? Because we received our payment. Our payment was 400, I said really 400, more like 1,000 years yeah. of, of just agony. Yes, sir. Yeah. Right? So we've gone through it, and thank God we finally had the internet. <laughs> right? We start to see things change. You know, it's funny. Sometimes I look at things, look at things in the natural, and I'm like, man, and how they kind of playing with the spiritual. You notice how, like, last couple years, and I'm just saying in general, it's not no biblical deal, right? <clears throat> sports. You notice how like, you see in the sports teams, all these underdog teams that haven't done nothing in so many years, all of a sudden they come to the top. Mm -hmm. Like, <clears throat> the Cubs finally win a, cha um, win a championship. Mm -hmm. They had the curse upon them for 100 something years. <laughs> <laughs> years. Right? So, we see in this time, I mean, you know, like, things just change. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. we, we, we see it we, we, right at the end of that. Like, you know, if you do, people have different numbers, but if you do your math, before the, the official start of slavery, to now it's been 379, 397 years. Wow. Um, but if you go from the time we've been in slavery, period, it, um, it goes farther than that. Yeah. But if you're talking about the official date, you know, we're just a couple years out of that. And then we've seen all these things are, you know, starting to come to pass. Double rebellion, remember that, right? <clears throat> um, Jeremiah 50, 23 says this. How is the hammer of the whole earth cut asunder and broken? How is Babylon become um, desolation of the nations? I got a um, world military budget. Hammer is something that you use to do two things, rather to build or destroy. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. It's a weapon, right? Look at this. Look at the comparison of the military budget between wow. us and every other nation. Wow. It's not even close. Not even close. <clears throat> so when you hear Hillary say stuff like that, I got this video in, in here too, but I don't know if you're going to hear what she said. They talked to Hillary about um, about going to war with Russia. This is all she's been talking about, going to war with Russia. The king of the north, right? She says, um, <clears throat> well, all we know is if they take any kind of military action against Israel, because Israel's our ally, I said we'll hit, she said we'll um, move bomb them. And she said they'll be obliterated. She said, obliterated? Or, there's some word like obliterated. But anyway, she came back. She said, well, I know I probably shouldn't say that, but that's exactly what's going to happen. Wow. Right? So why? Because they know the weapons. The weapons that the United States have are unsurpassed. Like, I'm a nerd, so I watch stuff, right? I research stuff. Mm -hmm. Go look up DARPA, D-A-R-A-P. D A R P A. Yeah, that's right. 
anyway, dark, right? <laughs> Defense, advanced, red, um, weapons, and projects, right? It's um the smart branch of the military. Look at this stuff they make. It will blow your mind. The weapons that they have, they got this thing called the cheetah. You can go, you do, because like, this is what um, DARPA does. DARPA has competitions for brains around the, the nation to come and compete and build these machines. And then they give them, they basically bring them in to work for them, right? Mm-hmm. They got this thing called the cheetah. It's a robot that can run up to 40 miles per hour. Wow. You saw it? They got it on the treadmill, a robot on the treadmill yeah. running. It's like it looked like a like a little like an animal, but yeah. they don't have no head. Yeah, no head. yeah right, right, right. Um they got these things that are like um they like the size of a mosquito, but they're drones that they have like syringes on them that can deliver they can deliver poison. Kid you not, go look it up. The stuff they have will blow your mind. So and why why is God allowing them to do that? Because the curse said do what? Have no power in your hand. There's nothing for you to do. What God is setting up is David and Goliath. Mm. Uh, right? Again, what did Goliath use to kill? I mean, what did David use to kill Goliath? Stone. 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 Mm-hmm. The rock, right? Go to Daniel, right? Daniel sees the prophecy of the image where all these different um, um, different stones is made out of. And it says the rock that's cut without hands comes and smashes it and destroys it. And it kills the whole earth, right? Mm-hmm. So it's going to be the same way. It's Goliath. There's nothing we can do. We're not going to raise up and do anything in America. You're not, that'd be stupid. For, again, I'm telling you, look at the defense budget. You'll be a fool. <laughs> you'll, be a, you'll be a fool. People, I'm talking to people. People are like, man, you know what, man? You know, it's bad. I say, man, you know what? We got to do something like this, man. You know, man, I'm going to give you a gun. What is a gun going to do? What is a gun going to do? Think it's, in a, think it's in a drone over your house the size of my cell phone and blow you up. You know what? What you going to do? It's out. Oh like God. it's ridiculous. You can't do anything. That's the whole point. Why? Because God, Christ is what He's the lion of the tribe of Judah. That's right. He what? He's the protector of the tribe of Judah. Anytime we in we in a position where we need anything, it's Him. He will make sure it's the position we can do jack, and He has step in and do it. Yeah. Right. Wow. So that's, that's what He's good, doing. Man. Right. He's that He's that rock that's cut without hands. Right. So anyway, keep going. I've laid a snare for thee. And, and thou should be taken in the words talking Babylon. God is setting this up, right? Uh-huh. Um, <clears> that was not aware. Follow, follow the news, follow social media, talk to people and see how unaware they are what's going on. Yes. I go around and talk to people like, man, I said, you know what's going on with Russia? Nah, I don't know what's going on with Russia. You, 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 Russia did literally, I don't know if y'all know this, but two weeks ago, Russia had um, a uh, nuclear blast drill. They had 40 million people participate. 40 million mobilized all of them underground. Right? Same thing with China. China done came out. They did they, 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 uh, what they did nuclear drill. But they also talking about um they telling people that nuclear war is ending. All them talking about it. You know, talking about the United States. Kim Kardashian. Kim Kardashian, Beyonce, yeah. everybody sitting around doing this every single day. But they unaware. Not aware. That's right. Yeah, that's right. Right. Because we're so caught up in media. When everything is collapsing around us, man. Anyway, no, no fly zone. Every day they talking about the freaking no fly zone. They had um, one of the gen- generals or whatever. He, they, um, they had some kind of Senate meeting. He talked to them and said, well, "What can we do in Syria?" He said, "The only way we can do anything is start no fly zone." And, and, and the general said, "Well, look, if we have no fly zone. We're going to instant war with Russia and the allies. We're going to go to war with Russia and Syria, right? Nobody's talking about it. But anyway, again, they're going to be unaware, right? That was not aware. That I found. They're also called because the Lord is struggling because they're struggling against the Lord, and that's exactly what they're doing. All right, keep going." Hope I can get through this. All right. I've laid a snap for thee. That's read that. I read that. Let's keep moving. All right. Jeremiah 50 26 says this. Come against her from the utmost border upon her storehouses. Cast her up as heaps. Utterly destroy her. Let nothing be left. I'm going to go this real fast. Y'all get the idea. Right? The voice of them that the voice of them that flee and escape out of Babylon shall be us. <laughs> Check this out. To declare in Zion the vengeance of the Lord our God and the vengeance of his temple. What we're going to find out is people are going to, even with Hebrews, there's going to be so many Hebrews that love America so much that they're going to see her. Yeah. It's going to happen. Yeah. So Josh, why do you say that? Go back and read scripture. Read the first Exodus. See what, what they told Moses. See, for a long time, like, man, you know, they, you know, they're right about the wilderness. They're in the wilderness. They're like, man, Moses, they should have thrown us back. But you got to read the Friar Prince. Because if you read that in that scripture, they say this. They say, we told you when you told us the first time. In other words, he says, when Moses went to them the first time, they said, leave us alone. 
They didn't want to leave Egypt, right? But Moses, <laughs> Moses and the Lord just dragging them out. That's the reason why they remained. That's why they died in the wilderness. Because their mom was still in Egypt. Mm. Right? Mm. But again, go back and read the scripture. I forget what exact, what exact verse it is. But he said, we told you about four times. Remember the words, when you first came to us and told us about leaving, you know, leaving um, um, Egypt, and we didn't want to go. They told him, right? So it's going to be so many. He told the people, man, America is a idol for people. Like, mm-hmm. we we so caught up on it. And the reason why we have, again, we're trying to integrate. Mm-hmm. We're trying to do all these things. We want equality. We will never have equality. It ain't going to happen. Mm-hmm. It was not the will of God for us to have equality. Mm-hmm. And the reason why we won't have equality is because God wants us to lean on him. Right. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. There's a scripture in the Bible that says we would no longer lean on him that, that, um, that smite us. That's right. right? We lean on him for everything. We think that if we're going to elect the official, we think we're going to raise up some civil rights leaders that's going to pull us out the gutter, it is not going to happen. No, sir. Right? So we're going to have to come together. We have to focus on Christ. And when we really do that, we're going to understand a couple of things. One, that we, like you said at the beginning, we're in the land of our enemies. You can tell some Negroes that just don't believe. Yeah. <laughs> Am I lying? You're lying. Yeah, you're lying. Tell them that. Oh, man, well, you know, I believe, you know, you know, I'm, I'm for Trump. And, you know, it's, it's this person's fault, that person's fault. Blah, 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 blah. No, we're in the land of our enemies. There are plans. Now, I'm on Facebook. Like, go, go, go research Cointel, bro. When um, J. Lou Hoover made the statement, they said that they have to take down any potential black messiah that might unite the black um, black community. Wow. Uh, Rick Ryan, yeah, they do. From Jump Street. You got, you got to take part in these people. Black messiah, who the messiah is black. So what's going to happen to the people who declare the black messiah? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? It's coming. Mm-hmm. Like, so the people, again, Read in, Re- in Revelation, read what John writes. John says what? When you talk about battle, it says, come out from among her, my people, uh-huh. that you won't receive none of her plagues. Yes. Right? So why does God have to urge people to do it? Because some people don't want, they don't want to leave it because they love it so much. Mm-hmm. Right? Wow. So, and, th- and that's why we're doing what we're trying to do. Like, right. you know, our brothers right. and sisters, everybody that's here, we, we, we coming together and yeah. trying to, like, go over these scriptures and try to encourage one another because we coming from a state of perpetual um, um, thinking of us to being lesser yeah. to a state of a purpose. Exactly. Because we never thought we had a purpose exactly. besides to exist and be American. That's right. mm. You follow me? Yeah. Now we're trying to learn how to be God's people, which is two completely different things because America is Babylon. We can't be Babylon, mm-hmm. right? But anyway, there's going to be people that's going to that's stay behind. And when they do, if you get a chance, I know some people don't like the Apocrypha, but read the book of Maccabees. The reason why I say the back book of Maccabees is because it gives you the history of what really happened mm-hmm. between Malachi and Matthew. You need to know what happened between Malachi and Matthew. I'll be in church when I was a kid. We didn't know. That's the, that's the age when the Lord didn't have a word. Nobody didn't say that. That's the best bold face. It's in the Maccabees. I mean, and in the Maccabees, you learn about the Greeks and how the Greeks were forcing them to do stuff. Like, for instance, being real with you, these holidays. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, these mm-hmm. holidays. Mm-hmm. Now, one thing I will get at, I'm sorry, I'm sorry about the holidays in general. But, <laughs> and on the, same, on the same tip, like, the holiday, you know, if you read the book of Maccabees, they talk about how they force them to participate in the Feast of Bacchus. Right? If you know who Bacchus is, that's that's Christmas. That's what that is. Mm-hmm. Right? The Feast of Bacchus. And they made them um, carry um, ivory and stuff like that. Not ivory, but some, I'll give it some other type of thing. In, the, in these type feasts and force them to participate in it, wouldn't allow them, check this out, to be named in Hebrew. So, hmm. same thing happened to us. Came in to change our names. It doesn't matter. Why do you think during Jesus' time, cats had names like John, Matthew, um, Mark, and all these different names, mm-hmm. like Hebrew names? Okay. So, what happened? It was the Greeks. The Greeks came down, took over everything, and started forcing them. You can't, can't have these Hebrew names. You can't have these Hebrew traditions. You can't have these Hebrew holidays. It was against the law, and it would kill you. It was to death if you represent if you wow. did feast okay. days. You participated in anything that's yeah. in that Bible. They would kill you, mm-hmm. right? But we think, oh man, you know, like man, I just I gotta you know gotta have that mistletoe. You know what I'm saying? Gotta take that Christmas tree. <laughs> gotta have you know all those things mm-hmm. pagan. Like you know, me and you maybe talking people like because it came to mind. I said we don't celebrate that one holiday in that Bible. We said, like, oh, it's pagan holiday. Right. And if you talk to somebody about it, it looks like you're crazy. You're like, right. They get mad at you. Yeah, they get mad at you. Oh, people, you're over They start, they say that, ask them questions. Say, like, why the, in the book of Ezekiel, and the Bible talks about after the um, um the kingdom is set up, and he returns, right. they said that the whole world will have to come to Israel to, to participate in the Feast of Tabernacles. Mm. This in the future, they haven't happened. So that means that it's something we 
probably should just, just be doing that, right? Okay. Instead of um going to worship in Baal in these holidays, because all these right. look, go y'all get a chance, go look up um a Wiccan calendar. Look up a Wiccan calendar, you'll see every holiday, Sam Hain, December, all these feasts to say we're going we're going we're going to a fall festival. Where do you think feasts come from? Mm-hmm. I'm talking about the feast days. That's where festival come from. Come from the word feast. You go look it up. That's what it talks about. These, they're holy days. So where holidays come from? Right. There ain't no ho- no holy days without Christ. Come on, yeah. But again, it's part of that Babylon mentality, right? Yeah. The Greeks have forced us to participate in that kind of thing, and we we pass down the sins of our fathers. You know. Anyway, all right. Try to wrap this up. So, um, shalom. <laughs> Uh, and again, it says the most proud shall stumble and fall, and the noise shall raise them up, and our king of fire in the seas, and shall devour him round about. The most proud, right? We people say America the great, America the greatest country, the great, the great, the great. And you read Revelation, it says mystery of Babylon, the great. Um, mm-hmm. she says I would, I would not be a widow, I not suffer loss of children, I won't lose anything. Yeah. You talk to people about man, I'm at work, talk to this dude. I'm like, man, I said, man, you go to a store in Russia? Yeah, man, that Russia talking about they gonna go to war with us, man. He's like, man, you know what though? Ain't the wedding music, bro. <laughs> and then none of these people, nah, ain't the wedding music. This is America, man. We the greatest country in the world. This, this is going to talk to people. Yeah, I'm just going to break his tongue, bro. Right? And then again, you read the Bible. In the Bible, it's the exact same things they said about Babylon. Right? Mm-hmm. How was the hammer of the, the whole earth cut asunder? He's asking the question, like, how is that possible? So we talk to people, like, we're the hammer of the whole earth. It's not possible. Mm-hmm. You understand, right? So it's gonna catch them off guard. Here we go. The um the word course to the Americans. I just throw this in here, this is random stuff. This is basically how we think. America we number one. North is uninhabited. Down south, that's where coffee comes from. Down, <laughs> down there, cold, up north is south. I mean, that's the kind of mentality we have, right? <laughs> no one likes us, America, we don't care, right? <laughs> You got um C. J. Bourget with his glasses on. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> you know? But anyway, check this out. He's giving you clues again about the modern day Babylon. It says, um, the children of Israel and Judah were oppressed together. In other words, the same place. Yeah. Right? And he that took them captives, held them fast, and refused to let them go. People don't realize they're still captives. If you're in America, you're a captive. You don't believe me, try to leave the country. <laughs> yeah. Try to leave. Yeah. You don't try to leave. Yeah. Right? Um, first thing, when we get to the border, they're like, where you going? Oh, you know, I'm like, me and my wife, we cross the border a lot. We're going to Canada. How long are you going to be there? Uh, a couple of weeks. When are you coming back? Uh, oh, uh, what's your business there? What you bringing back? What you trying to, you know, that, that kind of stuff. And you can only be there for a certain amount of time. You're going to do all these processes for you to actually leave. I mean, you can't just leave. Not only that, now get to the whole process about what you do with the financial system, how you explain the, fin- the financial system. That's a whole other um, concept. We can come at it all night. So let's actually try to finish this, but I think we might actually be able to do it. All right. A drought is upon her waters, and they should be dried up, for the land is full of graven images, and they're uh, mad upon the idols. I don't know if y'all know this, but we're in the midst of a drought right now. Yeah. Um, especially in California. Um, and I got the video to talk about the California drought. Not going to play it. Just keep moving. But um, in California, the drought is so bad that there's certain crops they think we're going to lose in the coming years. Um, it's going to affect everything. Um, and it's... it's it, Give you an example. Let's talk about California. We driving down here to Augusta. We came to um, Savannah a couple months ago. We passed over the, the um, I guess it's that um, that lake down there. That's McCormick. Yeah, I think it's between McCormick and like Augusta or whatever. So it's about to dry up now. I mean, just show you how um, what's going on. Right? Those, both these things are starting to happen already. Mm-hmm. All right, I promise y'all I'm about to wrap this up. All right, here I am. I need some time. Therefore, the wild beasts of the earth and the wild beasts of the islands should dwell there, and the owls should dwell there. Get this out. They should not be inhabited forever, neither shall it be dwelling from generation to generation. This did not happen to the um, Babylon during Nebuchadnezzar's time. Did not happen. This is a future Babylon. How do we know that? Because people who live in Iraq today, Mosul, all the places over there, the places near Babylon. Matter of fact, Nebuchadnezzar. Um, um, Saddam Hussein, I don't know if y'all know this, but Saddam Hussein was actually rebuilding the Ishtar Gate in um, Iraq. Mm. Right? Um, uh, Saddam Hussein had this, this idea that him and Nebuchadnezzar were direct descendants. He even had coins with his face on it and Nebuchadnezzar's side, uh, face on the other side. Okay, mm. And he started rebuilding the Ishtar Gate in the courtyard and all that kind of stuff. So it, this stuff about it should not be inhabited forever. They didn't happen to that Babylon. It's talking about the future Babylon. Mm. Okay? All right. 
about to wrap this up real fast. One to fifty one. Um, Jimmy, read this to me real fast. Thus saith the slain shall fall in the land of the Chaldeans, and they that are thrust through in her streets. For Israel has not been forsaken, nor Judah of his God, of the Lord of hosts, though their land was filled with sin against the Holy One of Israel. Okay, again, some of us not being forsaken, it's talking about that covenant that we still have, right? Mm-hmm. It's still being fulfilled. Alright. Flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will render unto her a, a recompense. The time, <clears throat> I'm not even touching that because, you know. I, me and Jimmy had these conversations all the time. When is it going to be the time? I don't know. I'm thinking that God's going to give us a specific time because we don't, sometimes we can get ahead of ourselves. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Try to do too much. Mm-hmm. Um, it's a dude that I seen this video from um, New York back in the 70s. They took like 70 people from um, New York and went to um, Israel and tried to live there and they ran into all this stuff with the Jewish people because they didn't want them to be there and all that stuff. So people have to go before we go back. So um, that's the sign I'm really I'm looking for, right? I think we can kind of, again, get too excited, run over there and try to start some kind of um, development over there, and then get ran back out. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Get ahead of yourself. But anyway, try to wrap this up. All right. Got a couple more slides. We'll be done. Um, Babylon has been a golden cup in the Lord's hand um, that made all the earth drunken, the nation of drunken and wine, therefore the nations are mad. The, this is the reason why they're mad. <laughs> okay. The nations in red are the nations that the United States or Israel has bombed. Wow. Wow. This will make you mad, right? Oh, yeah. Somebody showed up in your land, they bombing you, you be done with it, right? Yeah. That's the reason why they upset. This is the reason why they mad. Like I was telling you earlier, it's a literal madness. It's not just madness like, oh, they're crazy. They mad, right? <laughs> Babylon is suddenly falling, destroy half of half her. Take a bomb for a pain that she may be healed. Check this out. This is really interesting. This is a conversation I had with somebody the other day. We would have healed Babylon. Cool. Now, this, this, is, this is prophecy from God. He says, we would have healed Babylon. But she is not healed. What? So you mean, God has all these different prophecies talking about the destruction of Babylon. But then he stops and he says, we would have healed her. Mm-hmm. But she's not healed. So that means that somewhere down the line, there was a chance of repentance mm. for Babylon. Oh, wow. And they refused to. They refused. Wow. Right? Because he would be God a lot, right? Uh-huh. He says he would have healed it. Right? Think about, and, and you're like, well, Josh, did, you know, he wouldn't do that when he gave his word. Think about Nineveh. Yeah. Right? What yeah. happened with Nineveh? Lord sent Jonah. They're going to destroy that city. Yeah. Jonah didn't even want to go talk to him. He's like, oh, they all hit it. I don't, don't want to hit it. Got swallowed by fish. He made a three-day journey in one day. <laughs> he a brother, so he got that speed. <laughs> you know, he took all got down there. And he and they repented, the whole nation. Even, said, even the king laid us up in sackcloth. You know what I'm saying? The whole nation repented. So imagine what would have happened in America. They'd be like, hey, look, we did the people wrong. Yeah. We did the natives wrong. Let's, mm-hmm. let's do the right by these people. Let's give them their let's they land. Let's, let's send them back to their land. We know that's their land, right? Mm-hmm. Let's just um, give their place back. Let's pay them back for the slavery they did. Well, we fix all these things. The Bible says he would have healed that one. Mm-hmm. Right? She is not healed. Forsake her. In other words, no hope. No hope. And let us go everyone to his own country. Oh, that's us again, right? But no, this is actually them. My bad. For her judgment reached up to heaven is lifted up even to the skies. In other words, her cup is filled to the double, it says in Revelation. Mm-hmm. Right? The Lord has brought forth our righteousness. Let us come. Let us declare in Zion the work of the Lord our God. That time is coming. It's going to be fan freaking cast. All right? <laughs> Here we go. Make right the arrows. Gather the shields. Well, the key right here, you gotta understand this. The Lord has raised up the spirit of the king of Eden. Who did? The Lord did. So the Lord is over there in Iran, stirring the people up. For mm. mm. well, it's the vices against Babylon to destroy it. Because the vengeance of the Lord and the vengeance against the temple.
What's your response? Wow. Now, the Bible says the Lord, the Lord. has done this. Again, if you just keep going, they talk to John Kerry. They say all the stuff they're saying, but you realize. Give me Clinton, all the rest of these cats, they go out on television talking bad, big and bad about what they're going to do to Iran, yes. what they're going to do to Russia. And again, I don't know if y'all know anything about Russia and Iran, but they don't play, bro. My dad used to be like, <laughs> when I was a kid, he'd be like, don't mess with me, I don't even play the radio. <laughs> That's how they is. They don't even play the radio. You mess with them, they're going to they gonna get, get you back. Now, I'm going to tell you some key things about Iran. Okay? Iran got, they, they claimed 10 years ago that they, they said that they had a capability of destroying Israel in 24 hours. Okay? And on top of that, anybody, anybody know who Henry Kissinger is? Mm -hmm. Henry Kissinger is one of the biggest Jew on the planet. As far as, I mean, he's instrumental in constructing everything that happened with the United States. He's one of them dudes, right? Mm -hmm. Henry Kissinger said, I think eight years ago, eight, seven or eight years ago, um, in one of the meetings with these other people, he said Israel would not be a state within 10 years. That's what he said. He said the nation of Israel will exist. This is one of the top dudes in foreign affairs, the United States, and yeah, Israel. Yeah. He said That's it. Huge, right? He said it. So we in this, we back on the back end of that. So you talking about Iran, talking about that. Hey, death to Israel, death to America. Then you got Iran is in league with who? Russia. The king of the north. Persia. These are the names you hear in the Bible. King of the North, mm -hmm. Persia. Bible being filled with the um right before your face. Rise of the planet of the Jakes. That's what I threw in, right? <laughs> Vanity, the work of errors. For the time of their visitation, they shall perish. Check this out now. The portion of Jacob is not like that. But he's the form of all things. And Israel is the right of his inheritance, the Lord of hosts is his name. Right? Yahuwah of Samuel is his name. Mm -hmm. Right? So, again, he said a portion of Jacob. In other words, he's saying that the stuff, whatever they got, is it's not like everybody else, right? Yeah. So they got to return to reestablish this. This is this why when Christ talking about you light of the world. A long time I read the scripture, I didn't understand that you got to you have the context that pretty much everything that Christ said in the Gospels was directed to Israel. Yeah. Right? So when he's talking about you being light of the world, all this other stuff, Israel got to be established for the gospel. You read in Revelation, the gospel being preached to all nations. Mm -hmm. That's because we got to get it back. Why? Because the word, the, the boss of the law, the statutes, and the commandments yeah. were given to yeah. you. That's right. You are responsible for them, right? right? So we have to take those back to give to the world because when the Gentiles give them, a lot of times it is corrupted. Yeah. Right? We got it from the Greeks. It was corrupted. We have pieces of it, mm -hmm. but it was corrupted, right? Mm -hmm. So we have to reattain those things because, again, the Bible says that what the word shall flow from Zion. Yeah. You understand? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. So we have to be reestablished as a people. We have to be reestablished as a, check this out, holy people. That's right. Right? To be able to do that. And that's what brings faith back into the world. So that time of, um, in between. And that's the reason why, again, um, I know some people believe that we won't be back in the land until Christ actually sets, sets down foot on earth. I don't believe that for a couple different reasons. One, because um, the Bible talks about um, Christ coming down and he um, gathering the elect from the four winds, right? Mm -hmm. All right, so you got to realize, first of all, the scripture before it, that happens, he says what? He that sent Judea free from now. Mm -hmm. So that means y'all got to be out of Judea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. How you going to be in Judea when you in Anderson? Or you in um, <laughs> Augusta? Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. Why are you fleeing? Why are you fleeing to the mountains? Stop fleeing from Christ. Mm -hmm. Right? Because Christ is regathering the four winds. Who's he regathering? It's the resurrection. Mm -hmm. Right? Because the bodies are still where they are, right? Mm -hmm. But we are in Judea because these things are happening in Judea, right? And then we flee to the mountains. And then Christ is regathering the land. You, you, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And then there's other scriptures that talk about in Jeremiah. Like it, says, it says, we ask the way to Zion. Mm -hmm. So how are we ask the way to Zion when Christ is, is just stashing us up in the four corners of the earth? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. There's a, a bunch of other things. Like you read in, um, uh, what you call that? What God can make God? God come upon the land. He says what? He says, let me go upon the a land that's gathered from the people from the four corners of the earth. Right? The land of unwalled villages. So that 
that means that we have to be in the land and be there to be on all villages. There gotta be a temple. Mm-hmm. Right? And the Bible says that he will suddenly appear in his temple. Right? Okay, and think about this. The last time the temple was rebuilt, what happened? Jesus Christ came. He came as way. Then, right? And it happened, it'll happen again, right? So all these things happen again. Um, and it goes back to the covenant. And I'm let I'm let I'm talk about that tomorrow. But anyway, last um like couple of slides. I ain't even worried about that. It's late. I'm just gonna get to the point, right? Just give that. I'm trying to um for time. Here we go. You shall set up a standard in the land and blow the trumpet among the nations. Prepare to gather the nation against her. Check this out. Call together all the kingdoms of Ararat, Mini, and Ashkenaz. <laughs> now you call the you call the Jews Ashkenazi Jews. Why? Because mm-hmm. they're in that area of Russia, mm-hmm. Germany, right? Appoint a captain against her. Cause the horses to come against her um, as, as the rough cow pillars. Prepare against us the nations with the kings of the Medes, the captains thereof, and all the youth, um, rulers thereof, and lead in all the land of his dominion. Right? So, yeah, go look up these names of Ararat, Mini, Ashkenaz, and Media. We know what Media is. So, you already got Media, which is Iran. Ararat is a place of Armenia or Turkey. But Mini is another, another it's kind of like, um, you know, you're talking about an area, it's almost like the northern, northern and southern um, Egypt. It's kind of the same area. Then you got Gog or Ashkenaz, which is Russia. So these are the nations that we see right now, that we see on television, that's already aligned themselves. Last couple of slides. How, I mean, the mighty men of Babylon have forborn to fight. They have remained in their holes. They um, they might have failed. They became as women. They have burned their door faces. Their walls are broken. <clears throat> One post should run to meet to the other, and the messenger should meet to another to show the king of Babylon the city is taking one end. This last um last two slides. This is just again, this is not me rock solid, this is what it is. I ain't saying that. I'm just giving you I'm giving you my thoughts, okay? How do you destroy a city in a day? Two ways you can do it. You can bomb it. If you don't bomb it, how do you destroy it in a day? Put a plug on it. Cut the power. How do you cut the power? Well, think about this now. If you cut the power from something, like from a nation, it will make sense for you to have to send somebody to get a message from one place to the other. Why? Because you can't communicate. Mm-hmm. Right? There's a couple things that can make this happen. One of them is what they call an EMP. If you ever, 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 ever know what EMP is, electromagnetic pulse. Mm-hmm. A me- electromagnetic pulse is so dangerous you can shoot it over a country. It, basically, it did not even have to touch land. It could explode and knock out all the power in America. And there have been studies in America about the effect of an EMP on America. They said that America would be completely destroyed within, I think, 10, 10 months. It would basically won't even be a country anymore. Um, completely. That's just from the EMP. Now, it's not from war. It's just from the EMP. Because once the EMP happens, not only will you not be able to use phone, internet, telephone line, you, you will destroy batteries. Everything. You won't be able to get from place to place. You won't be able to hop in your car and even go warn nobody. You have to go on horseback <laughs> or you know, run to get from one place to the next. It will wipe out everything. Okay? Wow. They do that, they're defenseless. You can't use your weapons. Yeah. You can't um you might can use a gun, but I don't know how you're gonna get there. You ain't gonna be using a tank because they ain't gonna have no power. You, <laughs> you see what I'm saying? You'll be a sitting up. Now there's a couple things that um and I got a video for that, but you ain't got time for that. I'm trying to wrap this up now. Um and the thing about an EMP is, this is the most dangerous thing about it. You don't gotta have an EMP to get effect of an EMP. A solar flare is the exact same thing. A, if you have a big enough solar flare, it would do the exact same thing as an EMP. You mm-hmm. would literally put send America into darkness. <laughs> Sit down silently and get thee into darkness, O daughter of Chaldeans. Thou shalt no longer be called the Lady of Kingdom. So you got this whole concept of Chaldea being in the darkness. Now think about it. So um, and silence. Silence means no communication. Mm-hmm. Right? We the place of communication. Social media, television, all this other stuff. Yeah. Done. How do you communicate? How do you get one place? How do you organize and exalt? Right? How do you, um, darkness, no light, anything. The, the, if we had a, sol- a big enough solar flare or EMP, it would happen. People wouldn't even know what happened. First two or three minutes. Everybody think they put something wrong with their car. Yeah. Especially if it's during the daytime. Yeah. You wouldn't even know what happened, right? We wouldn't be able to um, launch a military response. We wouldn't be able to move. Everybody be like, until they get like, um, I guess the next couple of hours. How do you communicate? Don't be no TV. Right. Wow. <laughs> no radio. Hey, uh, 
it would be complete chaos. We will be sitting up, right? So you can imagine if we, if this really happens, if we have an EMP, we can't fight back. So even though we got all these nukes, we got all this tech, we got all these super weapons, we got all this other stuff, it ain't going to be no good. We can't use it. This is the last thing I'll tell you about. I don't know. Let me, let's meet this lady right here. That's, that's the last slide. This is um, Lisa Murkowski, okay? She's a Jewish senator from uh, um, Alaska. The United States government put out a study, and they said the number one threat to America is an EMP blast, and they have to protect themselves from the potential threat of an EMP because of the destruction it will cause. They put money behind a study group to try to, um, to, try to um, basically start these protocols to, to, to stop an EMP. You know who shot it down? Shot it down. So a Jewish senator shut it down. So the only the only defense against this thing that would literally obliterate the country, right? And if, man, do you know what would happen if America had who has all these enemies that we already read in, in Babylon about Arad, Mini, Persia, China, North Korea, all these different countries that hate us, and we can't do nothing? We just sitting around? They would destroy us. Yeah. But that's what the scripture says is gonna happen to Babylon. Wow, because the nations are mad. Well, they ain't got to have no... They, they can, look, you can take a group of, like, a big enough militia, you can just take over cities. Yeah. If you have something that works. So, because what if, check this out, check this out, what if the EMP happened in the United States, and then some people had, like, some ships that was close, and then, like, just pulled up some um some vehicles that came over the land, and they still got power, and they still got vehicles. They can just roll through the towns and just take everybody over. <laughs> That's the reason why her shooting down that bill was one of the biggest things that happened that ain't nobody talking about, mm -hmm. right? Because, <laughs> to tell you the truth, I think that might be why um, Russians, um, Russian Putin's um, uh, Trump call. Because Putin know, anybody know, if you if you launch an EMP in America, a big enough EMP, ain't nothing they can do because everything like, everything we do is based off that. Everything. We can't even communicate. Going back, what does scripture say? It says, one post shall run to meet another and another messenger to go meet wow. another to show the king. So even the president, how he gonna know? They gonna have to send people to run and tell him oh. what's going on. Now that's back. Let's rewind back. The original Babylon. Um. Uh. Not. I mean, Nebuchadnezzar's son was a Babshazzar at the time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This, this service had to come tell him that his kingdom was. They had to come tell him that the kingdom was wow. coming. Wow. Right. Oh, yeah. Remember that. Yeah. So don't be surprised if all this stuff happened in the exact same mode. But um, but anyway, I'm gonna say shalom on that end. We're gonna um, wrap that because again, we've been talking all night. Um, it's nine forty. But um, and I promise y'all tomorrow the lesson be short, all right? <laughs> good, that's good, bro. Yeah. I just woke up. Oh, yeah. But uh, but again, that's uh. So we're looking at these wars, man, and, and keep your eye open for Russia, man. Keep you listen to what they do. What's happening between people? I, I don't got no, I ain't no time frame, guy. I ain't got no time frame to say this is gonna happen, that's gonna happen, right? Mm -hmm. All I'm saying is the Bible talks about the, the king of the north, right? Mm -hmm. Coming against us with a whole host of nations, and some of them being Iran, which that's yeah. happening, um, Turkey, mm -hmm. that, um, that's some of the people. Um, it, it lines it with the time that Syria is under attack, mm -hmm. which is happening right now. So all those things are in place already. And then, then you got the Hebrews who step back, right? <laughs> not really know what's going on, exactly. right? So, going back to that point, we need to start be thinking ourselves, understanding the scriptures and repenting, man. Yeah. Going back to that, you know, yeah. um, get, getting that mindset and stripping off all that pagan stuff. That's man. And that's and that's basically what, um, you know, last couple of weeks we've been talking about, just getting to that point of just going back to that, looking at it from that from that perspective, man. Um, there's a scripture in the Bible that talks about, um, especially when this holiday time, when the Bible says he he don't even accept our solemn assemblies, nor our feast days. Mm -hmm. Like so, what we doing? We say, man, we're gonna be having on Christmas. He's not accepting it. That's right. We say, I mean, but anyway. So we want to have about to be, be holy, and, um, you know, pleasing in the sight. So we want the things we do to be righteous. So we need mm -hmm. to try to seek those things out and find out where those things are. And again, last thing I say on that, it's not an easy process, mm -hmm. right? We've been westernized, so we look through western eyes, <laughs> right? <laughs> So it's gonna take a while for us to get out of this. I mean, it's gonna take a while for us. It's like you know, it, um, when the pastor's the um, pastor of the church, I can't remember the pastor. I heard him talk. He was saying how it's almost like you know you wake up out of bed, your head, especially when you still, you know you had you still had the probe, but you had a probe. 
throw sideways, push me like, you look at you looking like this, you know, trying to figure out what's happening. And like, we slowly waking up out of it, you know what I'm saying? And then you realize, man, you know, you, you know, you got crust on your mouth, trying to get that cleaned up. You know, then you little kid running around, like, you know, got to change the diaper. And you ain't fully came to, like, what you're trying to do, right? You're yeah. trying to find your way through, you know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? So, again, I'm not throwing no, I'm not throwing shade with anybody that's doing that. What I'm saying is, we got to come together. Yeah. We got to be a people, and we got to strive to do that. And we got to, in other words, take those steps. That's mm-hmm. right. You know what I'm right. saying? Right. So, um, yeah. again, um, blessing, you know, that's pretty much it on that. Blessing to be here with believers and brothers and sisters in Christ that had, had his vision, yeah, um, sure. that had his mind. Because um, one thing that, literally one thing that really is really doing with us is this united. That's right. Yeah. Because we've been so divided. Because even in the church body, yeah. you can't go to my church because you wear skirts. You can't go to my church because you wear, you wear a hat. You can't go yeah. to my church because of this. You can't, you know, whatever. Your, your church is my church is that. We all separate, but when we Hebrews, we want people. We want people. And we got one agenda. That's you right. Did? So I enjoy that. I just uh, um, like my brothers and sisters, and we come together about these scriptures. I get way too excited about the scriptures and what I thought was coming out about these things. Um, my wife tell you that's all I do is to sit around studying this stuff. Um, <laughs> so, because you know, so, but anyway, again, um, so I'm gonna say shalom. Um, uh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Um, um, like I said, God bless y'all, and then hopefully, like I said, y'all can tomorrow. We talking about these covenants. We dig into that some more too. Oh yeah. Good job. Great job.
continue these things up. Oh, sure. What's up, man? What's up, man? I'm from upstate, man. Um, you know what Greenville is? Yeah. I'm, I'm literally like uh, 20 minutes away from Greenville. Okay. What's up, man? Yeah. What's up, man? Got this under the overall one? Yeah. What's up, bro? What's your own, bro? Whoa. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, man. That was awesome, man. Man, I'm to it, man. Whoa. Well, man, I'm hoping that, man, like, um, we've been talking about we try to get something together, man, in, um, in Upstate, too, man. Okay. Pretty soon. Hopefully soon later. Let's go, man. Oh, yeah. Come on, Can you stop this? Uh, <laughs> 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 